Bears, it looks like at about the 34 yard line. Still in Bear territory as the Bears are credited with the first, first down. Does an excellent run play out of the zone read by Bastrop. Good read from the quarterback. Ford's got it again running. Ready. Creighton's got it. He breaks it over to the midfield as Creighton picks up another Bear first down with about a 14 yard carry. It's going to be first down and 10 at the Bear 49 yard line. Desmond Young has a snap, hands it off to Creighton again, goes up the right side. This time he's going nowhere. Maybe picks up one, maybe two before he's brought down by Alfred Collins, Alfred Collins yeah, with the help of Cade Edwards. Yeah, the tackle before that was a shoestring tackle by Cade Edwards on Creighton too. So I don't know if we're going out or not. It shows that we're broadcasting here. It shows that we're connected. There's the handoff again to the That's number eight on the outside. Oh, this time he's got Thank nowhere you. to go, but he picks up two as number eight for Hannah the Bears. Jones. Yeah. Hannon Jones, Hannon. he's no he's got some uh he's definitely got some yardage. The senior running back. Be third down and six here. Third and five officially. For Bastrop. All right, folks, a little off my game here, trying to figure out what's going on. Run read back. It's going to be a keeper. He's under pressure by. Oh, oh and he's he going to get sack. thrown for a loss. And he's Kate going to get Edwards. sacked. Kate Edwards gets in there with the help of Jacob Turner and brings down Desmond Young at about the 48 yard line. He's going to lose a few. And that's going to force a fourth down and eight. And shows the Bears are going to go for it as they have Jones and. And uh, low snap off the bottom. Be a false start. Throw. False start on Bastrop, it looks like. We're going to back it up five yards. Yep, false start, Bastrop. So now they put it at fourth and 11, 12, fourth and, to be fourth and 12 here from above. 47 yard line of Bastrop. So I don't know if we're having connectivity issues here at the stadium or what. I don't understand. I mean, it doesn't make any sense because I'm on a hot spot here by AT&T, and I have connection, but the software keeps dropping us for some reason and then reconnecting, dropping, reconnecting. So the Bastrop Bears are going to be forced to punt, and now it's fourth down and 12 as Cole Tidwell drops back to his own 30-yard line. Ashton Figueroa standing at his 20 for Cedar Creek. And another low bouncing snap, but he gets this one away better than the last one. It's going to come down and hit it about the 18-yard line. Figueroa picks it up. Oh, and nowhere to go. I saw his intention. He wanted to go outside, but that gap closed early. And Figueroa is brought down at the Cedar Creek 17-yard line. Brought down by seven Burnett on the play. So Burnett with the tackle. All right, first and 10 for the Eagles at the 17-yard line. I don't know if you're even broadcasting or not. I mean, I think I'm, we I'm are. I'm updating right now. We'll see if it goes through right. or not. I'm showing connected. Yeah, it went but right through, so we're good. We should be good. All right, Hunter Houston drops back in a shotgun position or pistol, depends on how you look at the shotgun. It's only about four yards behind center. Two setbacks, two receivers split right and left. Houston with the snap, drops. Oh, the ball. Oh, They're not going to pick it up. Ball. Nope, fumbled again. Oh, that ball is going to be in the end zone for possible safety. I think it's but it looks like Cedar Creek recovered it. No, yep. it's going to be a safety. Bastrop has it. So I'm not sure who fumbled that ball because I'm Hunter too busy watching the computer finding out whether or not we're connected or not. Yeah, Hunter did, and then Bastrop picked it up, and he fumbled it, and then Chris George landed on it. Now, technically, now, technically that shouldn't be a safety. Well, he impressed. landed on the one and slid in. So well, it should be first. It should be first and ten, or first, first and ten on the twenty for us. Well, it'd be first and thirty, I guess. Yeah, because Bastrop picked it up and ran and fumbled into the end zone. So that's have been a touchback, technically. Right. Technically, if Bastrop, then that's sure what the, what the coach is going to find out. If Bastrop, if they, if they deemed that Bastrop had possession and long enough to cause a fumble, then it should be a touchback. But apparently not. All right, so Bastrop recovers the fumble in the end zone. It's going to be called a safety right now. So right now it's two to zero Bears. Yep, 
Yeah, we had the zone read on, and they were on Hunter before he could even decide what to do with the ball. And it's hard when they get there during the transition of whether I'm keeping it or handing off. Because yeah, it was pretty quick. It's pretty quick. So the Eagles are going to have to kick it off from their own 20. As the Bastrop Bears strike first on some confusion on the defensive or offensive side of the ball, Hunter Houston fumbles it and picked up by the Bears in the end zone. After a little bit of a squirmish, some are saying it should have been a touchback versus a safety. Well, they may have they may have just figured that Bastrop never actually had possession of it. Oh, it's possible. If we were if this was the pros or college, they'd reviewed it. I think we'd have been I think we'd have had the ball first in a march, second in a mile from the one. Alright, so Nada Salas has it teed up at the twenty. And here comes the kick. And it's going to be a it's good kick, but it's a short one at the 40. Cedar or Pastrop Ooh. picks it up and runs back of about seven, eight yards. Looked like he called for a fair catch. By number 24. Is 20, uh, who's that? Number 22 for the Bastrop Bears. Nathan Blair. Nathan Blair Jr. Yeah, it was saying so Nathan Blair is a junior, I meant to say. So our officiating crew for tonight, referee Ed Johnson, umpire Terry Babola, Bab Bab Babola, head, <laughs> your headline judge is Marcus uh, Gravenberry, and your line judge is, uh, other line judge is Richard Dwayne, and back judge is Stephen Williams. So Bastrop Bears starting first and 10 in Eagle territory at the 48 yard line. First quarter still, seems like the game's been going on forever. Holding. There's a snap, or there's be a, a throw, call. and there'll be a holding call on Bastrop. The flags fly, and that pass was complete at the 37-yard line, but it looks like it'll probably be called back with 6.13 left to go in the first quarter. Bastrop bears up 2-0, to zero. and it looks like we're disconnected. Again. Yeah, three of them had Alfred Collins by the jersey. <laughs> Update scoreboards and tweets. <laughs> yeah, that's the least of our worries. <clears throat> so anyway, we're uh, still having some connectivity issues. I don't know if we're going out or not. So anybody, let me know. So anyway, Bastrop Bear is going to be first and 20 after the holding call getting called back. So the pass reception was nullified. Young with it with the option. He pitches it out to number four. He's got some running room. And brought down by Cade Edwards. Gets back a lot of that penalty all the way up to the 43 yard line in Eagle territory as the Eagles are having a difficult time finding a remedy for Jaquay Creighton, Creighton, the running back. Pete, what's your username for k -Mac? Senior for Bastrop. <laughs> Another run by Creighton. Creighton gets down to the 40-yard line where it's going to be third down and short. Third Who? down and two for the Bastrop Bears with 5.53 left to go. K-Mac, one, two, three. Who was on that tackle? Four. K-Mac, one, two, three, four. I didn't see. I'm trying to get logged in. This is ridiculous, man. It really is. We off again? No. I mean, we just we keep, every time you do something on that, you get kicked off. Every time, this is getting kicked off. You might as well be better off sending up paper airplanes. <laughs> Creighton, this time, he's got nowhere to really? go, and he's going to be brought down by uh, Alfred Collins for no, a that's loss. Not Alfred Collins. So they're going to – was that Ian Flowers? That's Ian Flowers. Flowers. Ian Flowers, number 90 with the tackle. So it's going to be fourth down and two for the Bears. That time, Creighton had nowhere to go as Ian Flowers saw that one coming. 5.15 left to go in the first quarter. Eagle, Bears up 2-0 to zero from a, after a safety. They got Cedric Tarver down here on the end. Cedric Tarver on the near side, and this time it's going to be – Oh, he did, did he not get, get it? it. No. He did not. Oh, oh that's, that's a, a bad, bad spot. spot. Oh, no, yeah, there he goes. There they he got goes. it. They All got right. it. All right, so that's going to be turnover on downs as the Bears come up short at the 39-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 for the Eagles at the 39 as Desmond Young kept that ball on an option-type play and decided to keep it, and it was read very quickly by Kate Edwards as he shut it down and – the Bears come up short. It's I can't even think right now. I'm just so. This is the K Mac Sports Network. Ugh. 
I'm I don't. Uh, this is this has got to be a software issue because it's not a connectivity issue because that that so, that hot spot is not yeah. dropping. I'm assuming it's updating, but it is not. It's not. Left hash mark. Here comes the blitz. Houston's going to have to get rid of it. That one's connected. Oh, just a huge block that yeah. would have turned that way upfield. And that's going to yep. come up short as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe one yard on forward progression. It's going to bring up fourth down and three. Yeah, 74 missed a Missed a huge block. block. That is a giant Brian play. He, you can't miss that. As that, that kid can't miss that block. 3.53 to go in the first. The Eagles are forced to punt again as they're starting out on their heels. Here, Bastrop Bears, Cedar Creek Eagles live at Memorial Stadium. So that was the right call for that blitz. Yep. I think we're that live. That was the perfect call for that blitz. Yeah, it's just one missed block. That's it. Good kick. Real good kick. It's going to land at the 20 and bounce out of bounds about the 18, I think. Where are they going to mark it? They're going to mark it right well, at the 20-yard right line, the Hunter Houston kick. That's going to be about a 30, right at 30 yards. 35 from the 46. On oh, this from side. the 46, so 30, 35 yards, or nearly 35 yards. So the Bears will start first and 10 from their own 20. It looks like they're going to mark it at the 21 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Bears. As I've already rebooted, the only thing I can try to do is reboot the whole computer, but we're going to have to wait till we'll wait till half or wait till the end of the first quarter to try that. That's, I, well, that's and if the QA can hear me, when I update KMAC, it is not update. All right, Twitter. so KMAC, the KMAC web website is not. Uh, Not happy at all. So first and ten for the Bears. Desmond Young, shotgun position with one setback. He rolls out to the right. He's going to throw it. He's got a receiver at the 25-yard line. Nowhere to go. If he's forced out of bounds as Reggie Smith with the tie-up. and But he picks up four or maybe five Six. on the play. Oh, five yards. So it's going to be second down and five from the 26-yard line in Bastrop territory. I know it's hard for y'all to watch, but I'm watching. They have they have. Desmond Young rolled out the left. Oh, he's got nowhere to go. He's going to go. Oh, 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 that's going to be. That should be a penalty. That was not past the line of scrimmage. But he was out of the pocket, uh, though, so it's going to be yeah. outside the tackle. He still zone. has to throw the ball past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think they're going to discuss that right now. Yeah, he's got to throw yeah. that ball past the line yeah, of scrimmage. So yeah, that's running. a penalty. You're right. Sam is correct. Kate and Edwards. Desmond Young is going to be sacked. And the responsible party is none other than number 42, Cade Edwards. Has had, actually had a really good first quarter so far with 3.09 left to go. He closed on him like a rocket. I don't think Desmond thought Cade was that fast. Nope. No. He knows now. And I, what I was getting at right before the play is if I'm watching the line with Alfred Collins, those guys have no answer for him. Mm -mm. He's stepping over him, pushing him out of the way, and manhandling him. All they can do is run away from him. So don't look for anything to go up the gut tonight. So it's going to be all the way back, third down, and looks like 13 all the way back to the 19-yard line. 18-yard line. 18-yard line? That's what I said, right? What did I say, 19? 18-yard line. Where it's going to be third down and long for Desmond Young and the Bears as he drops back in the shotgun position. One setback, three to the top, one to the bottom. Quick throw out that left side. He's got nowhere to go, and he's going to be thrown for a loss as well. And that's Reggie Smith. Nope, that's five. That's yeah. Reggie Smith along with number five for the Eagles. Damian, Damian Perez. Damian Perez with the stop. And that's going to force another punt as neither offense can get really a stronghold here but in tonight's game as they're both struggling to get started. The good, the good thing is our, our field position is moved backwards into our territory. Now we kind of started out a little shallow, and now we flip field position. So we should be on our own. Uh, the on the yeah, the trick is going to be who wants it more, who's going to get started first here as he's standing on his old goal line. A bad snap. He gets away. A short, short, poor kick. That's going to bounce once. And Leave it alone. Ashton, oh, Ashton Figueroa is going to let it go. And that was a good block. He was face-to-face -face yeah, with face -to -face. it. face-to-face. No fair catch called. So... That ball is going to come to rest. First and ten for the 
Eagles at their own 38-yard line as Ashton Figueroa took a shot Standing there, there towards the end of that play. He kind of turned right into him. It was, yeah. it was fair. He yeah, never, it was. yeah, he never saw him coming. 2.20 to go in the first. Yeah, that was a good punt. Good roll. Yeah, it took a good yeah it definitely good took a bass drop roll, and that turned that punt. He kicked it from his own goal line it, all the way down to the 40 or 38-yard line in Eagle territory. So, so it's, it's not connectivity. We're having good connection here as an okay. update possession. Well, I'm still connected here. As long as this stays green, when it starts turning yellow and orange, that's why I'm in yellow and red. That's why I'm in trouble. Gotcha. All right, first and ten for the Eagles. Shotgun position. Hunter Houston, one receiver to the top and bottom. Left hash mark moving left to right with 2.20 left to go in the first. Gets a play change coming in from the sideline. Calls it out to his side, his uh, offensive line. Aaron Perales jumps over to the left shoulder. Now Bastrop Bears are showing blitz. We got Payne Allen down here on man coverage. Payne. As waiting on the snap here, showing big time blitz. Oh, that might have been a false start. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got a 45. Oh, and he's tackled after he picks up eight all the way up to the 46 yard line. A great hole read by Aaron Perales as he was able to cut back as the offensive line opened it up for him. It shut that bass drop blitz down really quickly as the Bear or the Eagles pick up eight. It's going to be second down and two from the 46. They're playing a one high safety man coverage on these. I look for, for us to go deep pretty quick. Payne Allen to the near side. Javon Livingston to the top side. Alfred Collins in there at tight end. One setback. Aaron Perales, pistol formation for Hunter Houston. Waiting on the snap. There's the snap. He's looking to throw. Quick outside. Uh, Javon Livingston has the first down, and he's still on his feet and finally forced out of bounds at the bass drop. Looks like the, maybe the 41-yard line as he's going to pick up about 16 yards on the play. Yeah, it was a little curl route. Nicely executed. He didn't wait for him to turn. The ball had left his hand before he ever finished his route. That so was Houston was able timing. to finally get set and make a throw, and it was spot on that time to Livingston as he turned around and met the ball. 134 left to go in the first. Bastrop Bears still up 2 to nothing after a safety. In mid-first quarter, Houston waiting on the snap. One setback. Here's a snap. He's got Perales. He bounced up the middle. Oh, well, yeah. Nope, oh. it's going to keep it. Houston keeps it. On the great play action fake, it's all the way down to the 37-yard line. He's going to pick up seven on the play where it's going to be, or pick up six. It's going to be second down and two, or second down and six for the Eagles at the 36-yard line. They're bringing the pressure just about every snap is bass drop, but they're playing a single high safety again like I talked about. We've got our man on the islands here on the outs. I'm looking for us to go deep before this. So Payne over. Allen, single coverage, near side, Javon's. Livingston single coverage top side. Houston rolls back looking to throw. He's got to loft it up. He's got Javon Livingston on the reception oh, down the way down to the 12-yard line on a great pass play that Hunter Houston has been working on all week. That's what we were talking about in pregame as he connects with the chemistry on Javon Livingston for another Eagle first down, and the Eagles are in the red zone. Man, I'm like Tony Romo up here. I'm telling you what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hunter Houston waiting for the play to come in from the sideline. Calls it out to his offensive line. Same setup, two receivers split left and right. One setback with Aaron Perales waiting on the snap. Here's the snap. Houston looking to throw. He keeps it. He's got a hole. Oh, and he's wrapped up quickly, but he picks up a couple. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe picked up one. Depends on forward progress. They're going to mark it at the 13-yard line, so he picked up one. And that's not Actually, that's showing me lost one. So, so it's going to be second and 11. That center's been back in the middle of the field, too, so that kind of opens up some things. We were kind of heavy on the left side, so you'll see what happens. So two receivers split to the top side. We got the, uh, Payne Allen and Javon Livingston this time, and no receivers to the right side. Perales in the backfield, Houston. And that's going to end the first quarter here at Memorial Stadium as hopefully we have the technical difficulties behind us now. The platform seems a little more stable as we're going to take a short break. You're listening to KMAX Sports, the Vite Media Network. I'm Pistol Pete with Scotty Martin and Sam Houston live from Memorial Stadium, District 13, 5A Division II matchup. We'll be right back. If you're from Texas, you understand the value of hard work, a warm smile, a firm handshake, and the loyalty of a friend. 
These defining qualities of what it means to be from Texas are the qualities you'll find in the folks at the Roscoe State Bank. Formed in 1906 out of the farming plains of West Texas, the Roscoe State Bank has been a model of true community banking for almost 110 years. Honesty, integrity, hard work, it's what being a Texan's all about, and that's what Roscoe State Bank is all about. Roscoe State Bank is a proud supporter of Cedar Creek Eagles and a member of FDIC. Now to the play to Trotsky's Big League Clubs. What a lot's better lineup. Chicken and turkey clubs, a power-packed pile of poultry. Ham and turkey clubs, hey, somebody got stack happy. And that humongous hunk, beef and bacon clubs. Catch all three lots better big league clubs at Schlotsky's now, before they're out of here. Cedar Creek Eagles, best drop bear, shoulder. Broadcast Network. All right, back here at Memorial. There's a snap, and this ball's handed off. He breaks loose. He gets over to the five-yard line before he's finally brought down. And that ball carried by Aaron Perak. Goes up 6-2 to two with a one-yard run by Hunter Houston. There's the snap. The ball's on the ground. It's blocked. And that's going to be picked up and recovered by Hunter Houston. But that remains 6-2 to two with 11-10 left to go in the first half. We're just going to play baseball. <laughs> yeah, shows were reconnected, but hey, who's to say? Yeah, that's definitely SMU next to us. Is it? Mm -hmm. Both of them have Mustang uh, books, and they're taking notes. Don't know who they're watching, but they're here. All right. So... Bastrop Bears, Cedar Creek Eagles. Eagles up 6-2 to two now after a one-yard rushing touchdown by number two, Hunter Houston. Well, I told you I thought there might be some coaches in the house tonight. I didn't that's think it was going to be SMU. That's Houston's sixth touchdown of the season, sixth rushing touchdown. Yeah, it is. Right there. SMU Mustang, sir. Don't know. No, Alfred's. Alfred's. I think Alfred's. I turned you down. Can't give it away. Let's not talk too much about that, I guess. Can't give it away now. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. I don't know. Look, I'm showing red again. Oh, now I'm yellow. Now I'm green. <laughs> so I don't know if we're going out or not. Oh, boy. Your friends are going to light me up tomorrow, aren't they? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not a Salas signs up to the 40-yard line. Now the Eagles are moving from right to left. And here's the kick. That's going to go down the left side, and that's going to be number 15 for the Bears with the ball up to the 20 to 25. Oh, and he bulldozes right in over the 30 to about the 32-yard line. That tackle by number five, Damian Perez again. One number and five. One, one and five. So, Dalen Jackson and Damian Perez. And number 15 for the Bears with the run back. That's Tyson Tarver. Is he the one of the Tarver brothers? Yeah. Yes, he okay. is. Yeah, Cedric and Tyson. All right, first and 10 for the Bears from their own 33-yard line. 11.04 left to go in the first half. Hope you can hear us out there and Audio radio pod, podcast radio land area. All right, Desmond Young drops back with two setbacks. He has a snap, fakes it to Creighton. He's got a quick throw up to the 40 with a completion Ooh, and Reggie. finally brought down by Reggie Smith. But that's going to be a bass drop first down as he comes to rest right at the 44-yard line, first and 10 Bears. You know, we talk a lot about Cade and we talk a lot about uh, uh, Alfred, but, man, Reggie's playing good ball. He has been playing really good ball. He's kind of like the unsung hero. From the that. beginning, he's been playing good ball. Yeah. He said his goal is to beat Alfred in tackles for a game. For a <laughs> That's a good goal to have. First to ten. Here's the snap. That ball, he's dropping back. Desmond's got a loft one up to where he's got a receiver. Oh, and uh, out of the reach. There's uh, no flag on no the play. Flag Great there. defense. Kid, you, you're, you're ten yards out of bounds. Yeah. yeah. There's <laughs> that ball was uncatchable on top of that. Not going to get a flag on that one. So, great defense. I can't, Number one, there he is, Dalen Jackson. 
one of the cornerbacks for the Eagles with great pass protection or pass coverage, I should say, a single coverage. So the only flaw I'm seeing right now a little bit from Alfred and maybe playing him both ways is his motor's down a little bit. He's kind of giving up early uh, on plays. Desmond Young hands it off to Creighton. Oh, oh, oh no! And who's there but none other than Cade Edwards to shut down Jaquay. And that's going to bring up third down and 10 as he stopped quickly. Man, he closes that hole. He fast. closed it really quick. I, I, he, that kid can read a backfield like there's no other. I hope Alfred's success brings Cade some some views too, because that kid is outstanding. So third down and ten. There's a snap. Desmond Young rolling up to the right. He's got three, four yellow, white jerseys. He's got nowhere to throw. Out of bounds. Is that a reception? Oh, they're going to yeah, call that a reception, but it's going to be short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down, and it looks like two. Anybody see who was on that tackle? Cade. Oh, yeah. Cade was on the quarterback. I uh, didn't see No, I was watching down it here. It was probably either Dalen or, or Reggie, one of the yeah, two. I they were both running that. back. Reggie but looks a little winded. And, and 11, the quarterback's a little gimpy, too. He looked like he may have took a shot from Cade. So Desmond Young calls his play out to his offensive lines. Fourth down and two. We've got Creighton and uh, Jaquay Creighton in the backfield. There's a handoff and snap. Quay goes out to the left side. He's got running room. Flag holding. And yeah, it looks yeah. like there's going to be holding on that same side. That ball is going to be brought back. But he had the first down all the way up to the 31-yard line. But that's going to be called back for holding. Thirty-two. It sounded like number thirty-two is called for the infraction. Eddie Brown. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. The downtown Dion Brown. Thirty-two is Eddie Brown. Yeah, inside but linebacker. Running, inside running, linebacker. Running, yeah, he plays both ways. Running back. It was a running back or fullback. So that's going to bring up fourth down and a lot, and Bastrop will have to be forced to punt as Cole Tidwell drops back. Let's see if the long snapper can get the ball to him this time. He skipped the last three off the turf. And that's a long way to – that's that a long punt snap. And that ball, he has to come up for it. And he drops it. Oh. He's under pressure. Oh, he gets oh, it away. It's a job. bad snap. Bad. And that ball oh, is picked up by Ashton Figueroa. He's going to run it back. Oh, and he's clobbered at about the 44-yard line. That was so we're going to call that about a nine-yard punt return as Cole Tedwell. I don't know how he that got that great, away. Great job by Cole Tedwell. Yeah, because Alfred almost had that blocked. <laughs> he didn't even try to kick yeah, it. He there just was took two eagles running. in the backfield as he uh, – I mean – Cole, all he just saw was was Twin Towers coming at him. Yeah. And was stopped, but then the, the surge by the offensive line just well, pushed Perales over the goal line. So so Alfred Collins came back and got another bite and pushed harder. So he was he was the line was pushing. Perales was in there, and Alfred come behind him and gave him that last shove. To that puts Bass or Cedar Creek up twelve to two. Here, middle of the first or middle of the second quarter, 8:15 to go. Looks We're like going they're going to go for two as Houston drops back. He rolls out. He's going to have one to throw. He's going to throw it to the corner. Oh, oh no! That should be pass interference, and it is. And that I'm not sure what that means on a two-point conversion like that. Let's they move it half again. the distance yeah. to the goal and go for it again. Mm -hmm. It's going to be pass interference on Bastrop as that pass was intended for none other than big man Alfred Collins. As him and I'm not sure who he got tangled up with. Oh, there was no tangle. He tackled Alfred Collins. <laughs> oh, I thought he <laughs> There was no that that was that wasn't even pass interference. That was tackling. Where's well, one way to get noticed in this <laughs> in this game, and that's probably one of them if you're physically ta trying to tackle Alfred Collins. You know we're going to wear these guys out until they change defense because they're we're in that one high safety. So now we're at the one-yard line. We're going to go ahead and try this again as the clock has stopped, and it looks like the referees are trying to figure something out here. The referee comes over, talks to the umpire. So to answer your question earlier, now you see the 25 seconds, the difference between the 25 and the 40. They only have 25 oh, because seconds. Oh, of because of the extra point. Right. Oh, okay, so they get 25 for, like, point after attempts. Yeah. Okay. All right. I learned you something. I'm learned it. So it looks like we're ready to go here. Split back. Welcome. Welcome. This is the K Mac Sports Network. All right, Houston. All right, Houston's going to be thrown for a loss as the Bastrop Bears converged on him quickly. That's almost going to be a penalty on number 10. 
Fritz. Yep, and see him grabbing him. Yeah, the coach is like, kid, quit taunting. Was it taunting or was it? Yeah, he yeah. shoved him down when he was already so on the ground. So I think it may be internet issues because now I'm down again too. Okay. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm showing. Let me look at this thing real quick. We can flip them up if we need to. Thirty-nine yard line. All right, trying to fix some technical difficulties here. I don't know what that is. What is that? Is that where, where's your charge? Is that your charging port? Oh, there. I was like, oh, that ain't gonna fit in there. <laughs> oh crap! I'm out of. <laughs> yeah, plug over there. <laughs> there. All right. Let's see if this helps any. Nope. Down. Yep. Uh oh. All yeah, right, folks, like I said, we're trying to get things reestablished here. We have some technical problems, so hopefully we're still up and on. So we second down and 13. So second and 13 for the Bastrop Bears from their own 31-yard line as we try to get reconnected here. We're on a different Wi-Fi now, so hopefully that will help. So, shotgun position. Hunter Houston keeps it, rolls out to the right. He's got a reset. Oh, I don't know where I he was throwing know. that, but that was into the ground. I think Payne Allen was the intended receiver as the Eagles are having a difficult time taking advantage of. I think the ball got hit at the line of scrimmage. Well, I, I think he just didn't know his route. He's looking at the coach. Coach was trying to tell him. Maybe just a little miscommunication. So, it looks like it was intended for Payne Allen, but essentially there were three Bastra or Cedar Creek receivers in the area. Yeah, it's 450 left to go here in the first half. Eagles are up 12 to 2 on the Bears. Houston drops back one setback. Four receivers split. Houston drops back looking to throw. He's gonna air one good. out. He's got Ty Pruitt over the shoulder. What a catch! Down to the 20, down to the 15 yard line. Ty Pruitt. What an outstanding catch. Over the shoulder, Willie May style. What an awesome catch by Ty Pruitt. And we're still counting the yards. All the way down to the 15-yard line with 441. The Eagles are threatening in the red zone once again. How far was that? Hold on. 51, 2, 3, 4, 54. That's twice for Ty. Again, I called That's, it earlier. Yeah, Ty Pruitt. We even said in the beginning that, we, uh, that before we even went on pregame that Ty Pruitt was going to have a good game. Looking for him again. Oh, oh Ty Pruitt, a little out of his reach as he tried to die for it. Great coverage. Going for the slant. By Bastrop's number 18, Roy Martinez. Pruitt made a trip before he, the ball actually got to him. Brings up second down and 10. Ty Pruitt showing out big tonight here in his uh three receivers split to the top side. Houston drops back with Perales in the backfield. Near side's Ty Pruitt in single coverage. Drops bed, hands back. Hunter keeps it. Got a hole up the middle. He's gonna pick up a few. He's gonna get down to about the 12-yard line, where it'll be third down and seven. Well within the range of Nata Salas if he can get the ball off. That's been a little bit of a headache for us here lately. Yes, it has, that's for sure. So Houston drops back, got three receivers split to the top side, one to the bottom side, left hash mark, one setback. Houston rolls back, looking to throw. What? Oh! Out of the reach of Payne Allen on the edge of the end zone. Not sure why. He seemed like he threw that ball really hard. And that's going to bring up fourth and long. And it looks like Nada Salas is going to come on and try to tack on three here with 3.43 left to go in the first half. He had him wide open, but just... Well, it was a really good throw. It was a throw that yeah. only he could have caught. Only he was catching it. But it was, had a little zip on it. It did have it a little zip. Had some zip on it. It was a little out in front of him, but nonetheless, it was a it was a great effort. And Nada Salas on the ball is going to be down at the 19-yard line, so it's going to be a 29-yard attempt. This ball's up. Good. 
And it's good. Nada Salas punches it through from 29 yards out to put the Eagles up 15-2 here late in the first half. You're listening to KMAX Sports, the Creek Broadcast Team. I'm Pistol Pete with Scotty Martin and Sam Houston. We'll be right back. State Farm is here to help, giving us all the chance to simply sit down and learn. Visit letstarttoday.com or talk to an agent. We're safe and sound. Cedar Creek Eagles best drop bear. Here's the thing though, we need to hold them right here. All right, back here at Memorial Stadium where your Eagles just went up by 13, 15 to 2. Cedar Creek on top of your Bears here late in the first half, 328 or 338 left to go in the first or in the second quarter. And the Eagles are teeing it up again on the 40-yard line. As Nada Salas coming off a 29-yard field goal. Gets ready to kick it off to the Bears. Deep for the Bears we have, looks like Tyson Tarver and, I can, and that Cole Tidwell on the other side over there. It is. I can't see what it is on the right side. And that ball is going to be a short kick up oh, the left great. side about the 31-yard line. Oh, 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 ball's on the ground. Oh, oh, great recovery by number 17 as he collided with one of his own players. Cedric and, Tarver. And Cedric Tarver is able to control it. So he wasn't deep. So I don't know who was deep. Was it his brother? It had to be Tyson then. So it was Tyson and Cedric? Yeah, Tyson's 15, Cedric 17. There you go. And okay. It was Cole on the far side. It was Cole Tidwell on the far side? Okay. How did you see that far when you're old? <laughs> it's hard to see that far when you're young without these. All right, so it seems like the new hot spot has done the trick. That's the first time we've ever had problems with this hot spot. So, except, um, except in Georgetown's gym. Yeah, well, George, that's like a lead box. <laughs> Nothing works. Out. I mean, we went as far as trying to tape the hot spot to the wall on the outside, and it still <laughs> didn't work. We played somewhere yeah, basketball last year. We had to jump on my phone, too, I remember. All right, Jum just Desmond Young has a reception out to number 12 and hardly anywhere to go, but he does pick up four. He's brought down at the 35-yard line, and that's Devon Strong, a Bass Drop senior, with the reception. Ashton Figueroa on the and stop. Picks up four. It's going to be second down and six as Figueroa shuts him down from that safety, free safety position. Jackson Bishop in the game. Now we haven't seen him much on defense tonight as he drops back. Desmond Young looking to throw. He's got one. Oh, incomplete nice pass. Play. Great coverage by number five, Damian Perez. Nice play by Damian. It would have been a first down if he would have caught it, and that ball was intended for number 22. 22, Nathan Blair, as he is in his hands and through his hands. But great, great coverage by number one, Dalen Jackson. And great sportsmanship, too, because not only did he lay the hit, a he hard hit, and he helped him up. Helped him up, gave him a little you pad. You don't have to see that on the other side of the ball, unfortunately. A little, little man pad on the booty. Yeah, all right, all third night. down and six. <laughs> Jaquan oh, Jaquay runs call. off the left side. Great He's call. Got the first down, still on his feet, cuts back, and finally Jacob Turner's oh. able to just to slam him to the ground. With a great tackle, but not before Creighton picked up about – 17 yards on the play. Yeah, that was a great call. Yeah, if you ever watch steer wrestling, he just that's he what he just, did. He really <laughs> did. He just funny if he would have pulled a rope out of his back pocket. Took him down. Jaquade Cher Creighton with the carry again gets to the outside, and that finally brought down by Kate Edwards. Kate Edwards, but he picked up all, a lot of running, but only picked up four yards on the play. It'll be second down and six as the Bears start to move the ball with their only weapon that they appear to be. Showing tonight in Jaquay Creighton. And he's frustrated, too. I don't think he realized how fast our yeah. linebackers are. So this is definitely a team that he didn't see last year. He saw a couple of plays. That was it. Yeah. He got early. got hurt early in last year's game. 2.13 left to go in the half. Throwing. And under pressure, Ian Flower. Oh, and there's a nice catch, catch by number 31. 22. Or 22 again. That was 22. Number Nathan Blair with the reception. That's going to be right near a first down marker. But oh wow, I that's going to be gonna short. To it's going to be one yard third short. One. It should be. I thought that was fourth and one. It is third, third and one. one. It should be fourth and one. Ian Flowers with the pressure. All right, third and one. 
Desmond Young drops back two setbacks. Here's the, he holds it, he's looking to throw, and he's got a receiver at the 40 all the way down to the 40, 36 yard line where he's thrown out of bounds by Dalen Jackson. But the Bears pick up the first down as they keep their drive alive here with 133 to go in the first half. Cedar Creek Eagles up 15 to two over the Bears. Collins was just a, hair, a step slow on that <laughs> yeah, play. Just barely missed him. Just barely missed him. But that could be the, the playing both sides. Desmond too. Young the snap. He's looking to throw. Rolls out to the right. A little bit of holding there. As bit. Desmond Young, I'm not sure what number 50, what Cavazos was doing there. Number 51 for the Eagles. That's what I'm sorry. William Rangel. He just seemed like he was caught up in the moment and just let that parade go by as Desmond Young. Up near the first down marker. Looks like it's going to. Well, they're putting it third down and. Yeah, it's yeah, first, first and down. 10. I'm going to figure out why they're not moving. It's like third down and nothing. This is Bastrop's deepest penetration. It is. So Bastrop all the way down to the 25. Jaquay Creighton with the ball to the left side. He cuts back, breaks the tackle, finally gets brought holding, down. Holding. And it looks like there's going to be another holding call called in the backfield. It's either going to be holding or clipping. I can't tell. As the flag rests at the 26-yard line, we'll see what the call is. Holding. It'll, yeah, it's going to be a holding on, on the Eddie, Bass Drop Bears. So that's going to bring Brown back. Again. That's Eddie Brown again. Yep, second call. Eddie Brown having a difficult time with that lateral movement, keeping his feet. As that's about the fourth holding or third holding call for sure that Eddie Brown has gotten for the Bass Drop Bears. That's going to back it up 10, so it's going to be first down and 20. Well, it does show you it does show you what kind of athlete Quay is because he. He, outside we had contained and he cut it back again. Yes. I think if he just concentrate on going one direction. But that's all you can do is, you know? is to stop that is you have to just set the edge, turn him back you in. You have to help. be disciplined. You yes. have to stay in your gaps. Yep. Set so the edge, a minute, six seconds left to go. Desmond Young drops back. He's looking to throw. He's got a receiver at the 30. Oh, oh, oh. That ball is recovered by Dalen Jackson. Is that going to be called a oh. 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 incomplete? He Come didn't on. have it. I, don't I think, thought I don't he had the he ball. Had I thought he had it and then got hit. But what great defense. Go to the replay. Oh, wait. <laughs> Dang it. Was that Reggie Smith with that hit? No, I think it was Jackson, yeah, wasn't that it? Was, that was, uh, yeah. Jackson Bishop? No, no, no Dalen no, Jackson. Dalen. Jackson. Dalen. So he got the hit and recovered the fumble? No, I think there was two different people. I didn't see it who might made have that been. hit. Might have been Reggie that hit him. Is yeah. your scoreboards updating? Uh, it's updating, but it's not <laughs> tweeting. It's not yeah. tweeting. Tweeters, twit's not, the, tweeter, the Twitter's not working for us, Les. I don't know why, but it's not working. Yeah, I'm hoping the score is updated, so I'm watching across All right, the second down and 20, Desmond Young looking to throw. He's under pressure. He breaks loose. He's got a little roll. Oh, he's hit hard. He Ouch. folded up, and he's not moving. Oh, he's up. He's Alfred up. Collins wow. and Kate Edwards no, hit that was Desmond Josh Young. Garza. Josh Garza and Alfred Collins hit Desmond Young at the same time, and I did not think he was going to get up from that. But that's going to be a timeout called that by hurt. Bastrop yeah. with 48 seconds left to go, and that definitely rung his bell. That's a lot of weight on you at one time. Man, oh, man. Well, Josh, Josh Garza hits up. like a truck, too. Yeah, yeah Josh Garza has that yeah. Dick Buckus type of hit. He does. He plays like that. Well, so does Cade, though. We're just going to stay right here because I don't want to touch any buttons and fear that we're going to lose connection. <laughs> it's working. Leave so, it alone. Yeah, it's working. Leave it alone. I mean, we just need to stretch the strings a little tighter between the cups. Jiminy. So, thank goodness we got Scotty's phone here with the hot spot on it because AT&T uh, has uh, let us down again here at Memorial <laughs> Stadium. Thank goodness you brought a power cord. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's fortunately, it's, I think it's is that is that the nine is that the note eight? What is oh, that? it's a nine. Nine? Oh, I got yeah, so same one. Yeah, that's a shout out. All right. Shout out to T-Mobile's better. All right, Bastrop Bears third down and what's that? Seventeen from the Cedar Creek thirty-one yard line. That ball is going to be whistled false dead. False start. So it's going to be a false start on. It's going to make a little bit. Bastrop going to back it up five more. Or wait a minute. Oh, was it? I didn't see a flag on the ground, so I think it was just a dead ball whistle. Oh. Now we're going. Ready. 47 seconds to go in the first half. Bastrop trying to get across the line. Here comes Big Ben. Oh, there's a nice screen, screen pass play. to Cray. He's going to come up well short of the first down. Good play. 
It was a good screen pass, but the Bastrop secondary, or Cedar Creek secondary just closed up the quick, and Jaquay Creighton walking away with his arms on his hips just saying, what do I got to do to get past this secondary? Yeah, good read by Ashton Figueroa and Cade. They kind of snuffed that out. So Bastrop's looking at the Cedar Creek team going, what the heck is going on here? This isn't something we're used to. As another Bastrop timeout at fourth down, and it looks like 11, and Bastrop's trying to draw up a play to go for it here uh, late in the first half, down 15-2 to two to the Eagles. This is the KMAC Sports Network. If you can hear us, yeah. you add that onto it. You know, first half, defensively, Spot other, on. Yeah, other than the, other than stopping the 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 um, sweeps, once we lock that sweep down and turn him back in, yes, he's still getting yardage, but he's not gashing us for the 15, 18, 19 yard gut runs. And if if we can continue to do that the second half, man, I don't see I don't see anything different happening. He is technically, I mean, really, hit their only offense. We've had a few pass plays uh, Bastrop did, but they've very, been very short, five yards, seven yards here and there. It's, hasn't, they have not uh, gone deep, and as I predicted earlier, we've gone deep three in the first half, and all three of them are completions. Fourth down here, snaps back. He's looking left. He steps up in the pocket. He's going to scramble Definitely and run. Definitely looking to run. He gets over to 15 to the 10. He's got enough for the first down. Did he step out early? He did. He stepped out right at the 10 oh, yard line. Oh, he, he, he knew the first down marker was. It looks like he's got enough for the yeah, first down. And a great heads up running play by Desmond Young to keep the Bastrop Bear drive alive with 20 seconds left to go. He stepped out with a, I mean, just a yard. So this is the first time the Bears have been inside the 20 tonight. In Eagle territory as he drops back in the shotgun position. One setback, three receivers to the near side, one to the top side, right hash mark. Desmond Young looking to throw. One-on-one -on -one coverage yeah. caught by Tyson no, Cedric, Cedric Tarver in the end zone for a bass drop touchdown. They should have had him double covered. They, yeah. they should have had the safety over the top on him. That's what, that's what, yeah, that's, that is what happens. You cannot single coverage him. We can't play defense this good all the way through and, and have a lapse right there. I jinxed it. Jinxed it. So on for the extra point, number 13. I don't have a 13 on my schedule, so I have no, I have no roster, so I have no idea who that is. Is that Cruz? Yeah, ball's up. Oh, blocked. blocked. Kate Edwards. Kate Edwards, Edwards have it. He brings it out of the end zone. We're going to see what he can do. No, he doesn't get far. Gets five yards, so that will go down for positive yardage for him. But incomplete. Uh, got a bass drop player, on, player the on, the on the ground rolling around a little bit. As 15 seconds show on the clock as the bass Cedar Creek Eagles nullify the point after attempt. And that's going to be an injury timeout. He couldn't get off the field quick enough. So that young man's going to have to come out. 15 seconds left to go. The score remains 15-8 to eight after the missed extra point by Bastrop. By the mystery man. Sure seems like we're playing baseball here. These scores. 2-0, 2-6, 15-6, 15-2, 15-8. So the Eagles are going to have an opportunity for maybe one play, maybe two on the kickoff return. Depends on how I'm that sure kickoff they, return goes. I'm sure they will take a knee and go to half. We don't want to cause any, any silliness, fumbles, interception. Take a knee, go to half. You get the, we get the ball back at, at, at in the third quarter. So Now, this will be a perfect time for Bastrop to do something silly like kicking onside kick. So hopefully they're, they're, they're going to be eyes up on this play. Failure is not an option. That's right. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's get some scores here. Cedar Park and Pflugerville, that's still pretty. They must be having issues on their scoreboard as well. A little too far. Cross the line. And you're right. Don't put all that <laughs> offside. I put that one in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 15 seconds left to go here in a half as both teams are taking their time getting back out on the field. Let's get us some scores maybe here in a minute. 15 to 8. Eagles clinging to a seven-point lead here late in the first half as they get ready to receive the kickoff here with 15 seconds left. Javon Livingston 
deep for the Eagles. So we do kind of have our hands team in. If you look uh, who's up in the front there, we've only got one deep. They're kind of expecting what I maybe have been expecting in something silly. They definitely took plenty of time to talk about it on the sideline before they came back on the field. And it looks like there's some confusion on the kickoff team. Uh, they're trying to figure out what they're supposed to do. As I think they're looking for a go, no go from the kicker, from the coaching staff on the on the trick play. Like the water boy, the kicker looks at the all the players, going, "Ah, oh, yeah, there's my." Yep. <laughs> kicks it <down>. right there. <laughs> Got the big eyes. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, he's gonna kick it away. It's gonna be a high pooch, and that ball's gonna be. Oh, oh that's a penalty. That should be. That should be a penalty. You have to have a. Yep, flags out. Flags out too early of a hit, yep. and number eight, Payne Allen, took a shot. Yeah, he did right there, and he's and it should be trying a to get foul. his legs under. It should it be an ejection. Should be a personal foul. He definitely targeted but, him. That was head-to-head -head contact. What number hit him? I didn't see. I think it was number twelve. Looked like a number twelve, maybe. Davion Strong. What are you clapping for, he's people? Yeah, that's just the way this that's the way this uh rivalry goes. It's a it's a blood sport when these two teams get together here at Memorial Stadium and uh it never ceases to uh not only to entertain but I think it was number nine that laid the hit. Number nine, that's the one getting all the congratulations yeah. Romello Flores Giles, quarterback safety, sophomore. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Payne Allen, we'll see what's going to happen. He's, he's got a whole halftime to recover. He's definitely um, he's going to be lucky if he seeing some little, some little Tweety birds. See what they say. That's it. So it's all he got was a 15-yard personal foul. I mean, it was you know, if you really look at it, it was just a matter of timing, because I don't, I don't. No, did he? I don't. Did he? He didn't touch the ball, obviously, or else it wouldn't have been a penalty. Well, he no, he didn't even catch it. He didn't even. He hit him before right. the ball yeah. got there. But he, yeah, but he called fair catch. And the new rules are. Oh, he did call fair catch. Oh yeah. Oh, I didn't see. His, I didn't see his hand go up. Regardless, you cannot launch off your feet to tackle. You cannot launch like that into a player. That's that. Well, he definitely launched pain off his feet. Yeah. He, <laughs> That was a hard hit. Well, hopefully he's all right because he's one of the key receivers here on a Cedar Creek offense. So Houston's gonna get a couple. I, I I would take I I would not take a knee here. Um, we got the advantage of the personal foul all the way down to the Bastrop. Looks like just inside the 40, no. 39 yard line between the forty and the thirty nine yard line. Yeah, Yo, you're right. With that penalty where it set us up. Yeah, you're exactly right. I wouldn't either. I'd go deep here. Again. So we got we got Ty Pruitt to the near side. And we got Javon Livingston and number seven. For oh, the well, they just changed it. Now they moved it back five. Oh. And that's Clay Vin, Vin Clark, who's a very speedy kid. He doesn't, hasn't got a lot of playing time, but he's inside slot receiver on that top side. Shotgun position, two setbacks, 15 seconds left to go. Houston with the snap. He rolls out. He's going to roll to the right. He's going to set. Got he's going to throw. He's got Ty Pruitt. Oh, oh just out of his running. hands. He stopped just running. Just, he stopped running. He didn't think the ball was coming to him. As Hunter Houston drops back with hands on his head going, oh, I can't throw it any better than that, Ty. Where were you? Yeah. That would have been a seven-point shot. They got one more chance at it, and that was an outstanding effort and pass. By Hunter Houston. Yeah, Ty Pruitt already route. has one touchdown tonight. He gave up on the route. And a couple of big receptions, 40-plus yards. Just ran out of steam or gas or something. That ball, he's got to be close. He's lining up nearly offsides as Ty Pruitt to the near side. Houston rolls out to the right. Great block. He's going to launch this one up. He's got Javon Livingston. He's got it! Oh, he's got it! Javon Livingston touchdown! Flag on the play. No. Oh. It's going to be and against Bastrop. The it's going to be against Bastrop. Throw an elbow to Hunter's head across uh, to the umpire. Cedric. Now that's that's class. Cedric went up and congratulated him. So Hunter Houston on the huge connection to Javon Livingston with no time left on the clock. Here's the call. No flag on the play. They picked it up. Touchdown, Cedar Creek. 45. 21 to 8 with no time left on the clock. And Nadasau is coming in 
45 to yards. Put the exclamation well, we point. Yeah, 45 yards, right? Yep. 45 yard blast to Javon Livingston. What a great, great throw. I thought Javon was stopped, but he continued running. He had two double, he, had, he was in double coverage and outran both of them. Here's Nata Salas on the hold. Ball's on the way. Missed oh, it. and he, oh, he got it. Right, just inside the left goal post as Cedar Creek puts the exclamation point on a great 15 second drive to put, oh, there's a flag on the play as the, uh, the rest of the Cedar Creek team is heading to the locker room. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be against yep. Bastrop. Decline. Offside. Decline. Offsides by Bastrop. So it's going to be a good point as <laughs> the rest of the team's heading to the locker room. And now they can all head to the locker room as the Eagles go up on the Bastrop Bears 22-8. And, and we're going to come back and recap that drive right after this. You're listening to KMAC Sports, the Creek Broadcast Team, live from Memorial Stadium. I'm in a state of caffeination. Got all my fingers shaking. Must have been my large Americano mochino macchiato. Now the family's gone to bed. And that's my favorite time to get some tips on better rates. Cause my State Farm guy answers late And even when it's not my agent Someone's standing by so patient Getting coverage questions answered Helps me to relax Get to a better state, State Farm Thinking about building something? The Roscoe State Bank in Bastrop has money to lend for your project. Whether it's commercial or residential construction, the lending experts at the Roscoe State Bank can get you the funding you need to get the job done. Drop by the Roscoe State Bank at 710 Highway 71 West in Bastrop, right in front of Home Depot. Roscoe State Bank is an equal housing lender and a proud supporter of the Bastrop ISD and Cedar Creek Athletics. Roscoe State Bank, member FDIC. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? We're like the biggest, most beautiful field of blue bonnets you can imagine. Except we're not going to play sports here because they're blue bonnets. What, are you crazy? We'll get some nice pictures before we go, though. Hey, hey, kids, just sit down over there. Yeah, we are right in the middle of them. Smile. Perfect. Well, we'll send this one to Grandma. Bringing your teams to you since 2003. We are KMAX Sports. At Austin Pets Alive, the mission is to promote and provide the resources, education, and programs needed to eliminate the killing of companion animals. That means more happy pets joining more happy families every single day. In fact, Austin Pets Alive has saved more than 25,000 dogs and cats since 2008. And you can help adopt a new family member, help out with a donation, or roll up your sleeves and volunteer. If you have love, time, or money to spare, we all have at least one of those, you're needed. Visit AustinPetsAlive.com to get started. Austin Pets Alive. Helping people help pets. Cedar Creek Eagles Best Drop Bears. On KMAX Sports. The Creek Broadcast Network. Failure is not an option. All right, back here at Memorial Stadium. But my, oh my, what a way to end a half as the Cedar Creek Eagles tack on seven more on a 45-yard blast by Hunter Houston to Javon Livingston for the Cedar Creek touchdown and then the exclamation point by Nata Salas to come on and convert the point after. 22-8 to eight here at Memorial Stadium. Your Cedar Creek Eagles on top of the Bastrop Bears. My goodness, that was 15 seconds of pure excitement adrenaline yeah i mean that was incredible what i mean two yeah. passes ty pruitt just out of his hands uh, i mean i mean him missing yeah. that pass it's actually kind of a blessing in disguise because it set up that perfect opportunity for javon on the opposite side of the field in double coverage that he just beat the pants off of yeah he, he had five yards on him at least yeah he just kind of gave up on that route a little bit and but that that's a, that's a touchdown there and then you come we come right back to the opposite side <laughs> under coverage Hunter just dropped a dime. That's, yep. There's no other. There's no other way to put it. It was perfect. Right in the what we right in the bread basket. Right in the hole. Right in the in the, whatever you want to call it is is what uh, is what happened. That was a that was that was probably the best 15 seconds of offense we've seen in the last <laughs> five years for the Cedar Creek Eagles. You could not put together a scenario better than that. That was that was perfect. Yeah, and it was all set up by it was all set up by the penalty. 
they helped us yes, out. Yes, they right? helped us out there. If we're on the right side of the 50, that's we we'll probably kneel the ball. We probably kneel the ball, right? But you yeah. will give us 15 yards and set us up at the 45. They're going to take shots. Why not? Well, and then really, I mean, that, both of those were touchdown throws. Yeah. We're, we're looking at Hunter, Hunter finished a half at 6 for 13, 182 yards, at t one touchdown. Perales, which this is surprising, Perales has seven carries for 36 yards. Mojica has one carry for six yards. It, it's not surprising at all because Bastrop's giving them a one safety defense. If you're going to play these our two guys as fast as they are on an island on single coverage and only give them one safety, all Hunter has to do is look the safety off of one of them and throw the other one. That's it. And that's what he's doing. And that's, that's exactly what he did in that last 15 that's exactly, seconds. Yeah, that's exactly he's what he's doing. That, that throw to Pruitt, and, he, and, he, and uh, with him missing that, like I said before, yeah. it set up the perfect uh, scenario for Javon Livingston on the opposite side of the field. Yeah, we're, Liv we're Livingston, Livingston has two catches, two catches for – or three – I'm sorry, three catches for – 70 yards. Uh, Ty Pruitt had two catches for 99 yards. Yeah. Wow. Kid's almost got 100 yards oh, already this catches, game. Yeah. Well, we have a, a sophomore. 180 passing yards in the first half. All of it basically in the second quarter because we didn't really get started until the second quarter. I see some really exciting things for the future of Ty Pruitt when it comes to this football team because he's he's really developed into an outstanding athlete. Yeah. And I see. And, and listen, if if Bastrop doesn't make an adjustment and start double teaming or running some kind of zone, as long as they're going to keep us man coverage, we're going to pick them apart all night. Well, I mean, in all honesty, I mean, they're playing. They're they're playing. They got eight or nine in the box the whole time. No, I know. I mean, yeah. And and oh, they've, still they've, showed, they've showed blitz five or six yeah. times, and it, and we I think we're we, picking it up. We, be, we beat it right five I mean, out of those six times. They're selling out to stop Perales, and what's happening is they're opening He's up Hunter. Him. Right. Yep. He he is he is right. doing damage now. We just gotta keep. I don't expect them to come back with a single high safety in the second quarter. I mean, the second half. Well, I I. I don't know what – I'd be really kind of curious to know what the fly on the wall is hearing right now in the Bass Drop locker room <laughs> because it's either we were not expecting this from the Cedar Creek defense or the Cedar Creek offense. Now, whether they're going on off of years of old, which is a huge mistake on their part to, be, to even start the game thinking that way because the, the, if they'd had any, any idea in the three non-conference games and the game against Brenham how – not only how or what the potential was of our Cedar Creek defense and offense, you, I mean, I don't know how any other way to put it. It's either, uh, to me, the Bass Drop Bears at this point have just completely dropped the ball when it came to preparing against the Cedar Creek team. I'm not sure that they, they're not prepared. I'm just not sure that we're just not beating them. Oh, well, we're definitely beating them. I mean, that last 15 seconds of the first half just basically. I don't think they thought I mean, that Hunter could do what he's doing on the passing game because they're selling out to stop our running game. Well, they've been playing. They've been playing almost everybody like this. They've been playing almost. I mean, the yep. games that I've watched is single. I mean, most of the time, sometimes they'll they'll play a they'll play a cover two, but right now, I mean, that's uh, you're asking your safety to do a whole lot. Yeah, you are. That's why. That, I mean, that's why they almost. I mean, literally, if you really. I mean, I don't know. Did you watch that game? Which against, one? Against uh, the Bastrop Weiss game. I guess it was no. on TV mm -hmm. at KBVO. I did not. Um, but Hunter was at the. Or I mean, uh, Sam was at the game. And there was no reason why Weiss should not have beat Bastrop last week. I mean, they, they it was that like you said, it was the same coverage, the same stuff they're doing here tonight. I mean, beating a dead horse, you got to figure out, you, yeah. you got to change something somewhere. And they will. They will probably try to stop the pass, but hopefully that'll open up Perales. Yeah, because I yeah, not Perales. only going to open Perales, but I mean, like like uh, like uh, Sam was indicating, um, Mojica only had what two carries. One, one carry. Had one carry. That whole and this is a guy. This is a kid that's averaging, you know, almost a hundred yards a game on the ground. And now, then tonight, he's has one carry for like five yards or six yards or something like that. Yep. You know. So and Aaron, Aaron's always good for yardage because what I've always said about Aaron Perales is he he has a second effort like no other I've ever seen in high school football. Yeah. I mean, this kid is able. He is. He's he like fifty percent of the time he has stopped. And 50% of the time that he has stopped, he always gets two or three extra yards on his second effort. He never stops his feet. He never right. stops his, his forward momentum. That's what you want. So, so right now, they've got the combination band on the field right now. We've got the Cedar Creek Eagles and the Bastrop. Uh, or wait a minute. Is that both? Yeah, it is. That's Cedar Creek Eagles and the Bastrop. That's actually a really cool-looking concept there with the blue and the purple like that. It looks really 
the plumes kind of mix in. So anyway, we got both dance, dance teams combining together. We have, uh, or uh, they got the honey bears and the eaglets dancing together right now in the field. And we have the marching bands combined, intertwined within each other um, on the field as well, playing a little routine to honor um, all of the uh, uh, people here in the crowd that are supporting the Hope Strong Gold out tonight here at Memorial Stadium to raise money and awareness for childhood cancer. There he is. So that little combination routine there that the Eagle Band and the uh, Bear Band, uh, Bass Drop Bear Band, uh, put together. So now they're going to split apart and the Cedar Creek Eagle Marching Band uh, coming off a very impressive com uh, competition this past Saturday up at Liberty Hill, the Liberty Hill Showcase. And um, holy snapples, that steak? Holy cow. Steak and shrimp? Yeah, steak and shrimp. <laughs> So uh, anyway, the Bass Drop or Cedar Creek Band um, came out and won first place in their group um, for best color guard, best choreography, best uh, uh, best everything. I mean, they had like five plaques that indicated everything that they won, along with a trophy. And then they went to finals, and out of ten bands, they ended up fourth. And uh, that was with a routine that wasn't even finished yet. So very competitive. The band is early in the season. Uh, with the best start they've had in Cedar Creek history. Um, and they face off tomorrow um, at the Westlake uh, Music Festival, Marching Festival, or Band Festival, I think is what they call it. And that competition will be a little stiffer, but nonetheless, uh, it's going to be a great opportunity for these kids to, uh, to show what they can as their routine starts. So I'm going to shut up, and we're going to listen to Cedar Creek Band.
Wow, your award-winning Cedar Creek marching band. With their rendition of Harvest Moon, and here's the fight song. And well-deserved today as the Eagles are on top of the Bastrop Bears, 22 to eight here at halftime. Very reminiscent of the Notre Dame fight song, if you're familiar. <laughs> You ever listen to the Michigan fight song and the Notre Dame fight song and how they're almost the same but they're a little bit different? All right, as the Cedar Creek Marching Band leaves the field making way for the Bass Drop Bear Marching Band, we're going to take a really quick break and we'll be right back. You're live from Memorial Stadium. Eagles on top of the Bears, 22 to 8. Live on the Vite Media Network and KMAX Sports. KMAX Sports is the largest online broadcast company in Central Texas. How large is that? Well, think of the Congress Avenue Bridge Bat Colony. Okay, folks, here they come. They're flying out from under the bridge. They appear to be Louisville sweater, and they're falling. Oh, ah, oh, the humanity. As God is my witness, I thought. Bats could fly. Bringing your teams to you since 2003 without dropping the ball or the bat. We are KMAX Sports. Everybody oh, tells me that dude, your donuts. car. Oh, that's okay. Here, watch this. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Oh, hey, Whoa. Who is that guy? That's my agent, Rich. Can I try? Yeah, go for it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there with a hot guy. What's oh, up? This could work. Who's also sensitive? He's a rescue. But has a dark side. Yo. Hello. Hey, dark side. Get your feet off the car. Find out what else State Farm agents can do for you at yagent.com. The Roscoe State Bank strongly supports the efforts of the Bastrop Chamber of Commerce and its We Believe in BISD campaign, which unites the community and local businesses in support of the Bastrop Independent School District. Bastrop and Cedar Creek schools have great teachers helping great kids achieve great things. At the Roscoe State Bank, we do believe in BISD and in its mission to provide pathways with pride and purpose for all of its students. Find out more at webelieveinbisd.com. Of the usual, Slotsky's is the only place to get the original toasted sandwich with made from scratch sourdough buns. Come in today and treat yourself to a one of a kind sandwich experience. Slotsky's, funny name, serious sandwich. Cedar Creek Eagles, best drop bear. I'm K Max Sports. All right, back here at Memorial Stadium talking about some uh, reminiscing of years of old Bass Drop Cedar Creek rivalry games are always interesting to say the least so we're getting ready to listen to the Cedar or to the Bass Drop Bears marching band they got some really cool props kind of uh, resemble a honeycomb uh, type thing like a beehive honeycomb thing and the, the dance team is dressed in yellow with black and white stripes to end it kind of looking like bees as they're all hidden behind the the props which is kind of like what we're going to have as soon as our props are in I guess our front our vinyls are actually supposed to be in next week so so here they kind of peel out they went to un unfortunately um, they went to competition this past Saturday at a different um competition there at the Tony Burger Center there in Austin and uh, ran up against a little stiffer competition I guess because they ended up finishing they didn't advance to finals and I think they ended up finishing 12th overall um, so I don't know I wasn't there I just everything I heard is all second second hand smoke so huh oh what's up Rick oh hang on
this week's Marchers of the Week are Aliyah Salado, Oliver Enriquez, Richard Arona, Justine Journey, Eric Mercado, Ali Banta, and Genevieve Sanchez. This week's section of the week, the Tubas. Today's halftime show is proudly sponsored by Premier ER. We would like to wish all right, that was the Bastrop Bear Marching Band. Pretty cool little effects out there. I like their props. So we're going to let me uh, cancel some of this stuff out here. And uh, you guys got anything to say before we go to break? We'll do this one here. Yeah, we'll do that. No, can't do Yeah, I'm going to do one of those. Yeah, let's listen to Boom Howard. And then we'll come back with this one right here. All right, we're going to be right back. KMAX Sports, the Vibe Media Network, live from Memorial Stadium. Cedar Creek Eagles 22, Bastrop Bears 8, with 2 minutes and 36 seconds left to go in halftime. We will be right back after these short messages from some of your local businesses. At Roscoe State Bank, we're more than just banking professionals. We're your neighbors. Family-owned, the bank first opened its doors in Roscoe, Texas in 1906. Since then, we've expanded to new locations, including Bastrop. We strive to be the best neighbor possible to those we serve, offering great products, the latest in mobile and online banking, convenient hours, and more. All with the highest level of customer service because that's what neighbors deserve. Roscoe State Bank, building community one neighbor at a time. Everybody tells oh, that dude, your donuts. car. Oh, that's okay. Here, watch this. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Oh, hey, Joe. That that's my agent, Rich. Can I try? Yeah, go for it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. With a hot guy. What's oh, up? Oh, this could work. Who's also sensitive? He's a rescue. But has a dark side. Yo. Hello. Hey, dark side. Get your feet off the car. Find out what else State Farm agents can do for you at whyagent.com. Do you? Love the game of football, wish you could be part of the action, then become a football official. The Austin Football Officials Association is actively seeking new members to officiate games all across Central Texas. The Austin Football Chapter of TASO, the Texas Association of Sports Officials, provides a two-year training program for new members. Taught by a crew of veteran officials, these training classes meet each Monday night from July through November and include classroom and on-field instruction. You don't need to be an ex-player or a coach to become a great official and have a memorable officiating career. As our officials will tell you, working around student athletes at all levels of football is gratifying. Plus, you'll develop lifelong friendships with other officials who share your passion for the game. Officiating football is a great way to get into and stay in shape, be a positive role model for student athletes, retain your competitive edge, and earn additional income. Visit the Austin Football Officials Association online at afoa.ws for more information. That's afoa.ws. Socialize with us. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what, that dang old internet, man, you just go on there and point and click, 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 click. It's real easy, man. On Twitter, at KMAX Sports, or catch us on Facebook, search KMAX Sports. Just another way, KMAX Sports is bringing your teams to you. Cedar Creek Eagles, best drop bears. All right, folks, and we're back here at Memorial Stadium in a showdown. It is. Eagles up 22-8 to eight over the Bears. Third quarter getting ready to start. The players are in the tunnels getting ready to make their way out. And here come the Bears as the crowd goes wild. You know, we dominated that second quarter, um, and we need to come out with the ball. We get the ball here, start the third. We need to drive and score again and really put the nail in the coffin. Well, Cade, uh, Cade Edwards had 10 tackles that first half. Two and, sacks. Uh, and two sacks. And uh, A.C. Uh, Alfred Collins had three tackles, which is kind of unusual. But he's been showing his presence in other ways as occupying that offensive line for the Bastrop Bears because it's taken at least two of them to contain that young man and keep him out of the backfield. But He's had a couple of, uh, he's rushed the quarterback a couple of times, even though he didn't come up with a sack. He's definitely put Desmond Young under pressure on various times in the first half. And here come your Bass Drop Bears. Cedar Creek, Cedar Creek Eagles. Eagles. Cedar Creek Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> here comes the boys from the south. Here comes 
when we just going CC. I guess our HS is taking the night off. And our Eagle, our War and Eagle. Our Eagle. All right, so just to recap the first half, the last 15 seconds were the most exciting. <laughs> As uh, Hunter Houston connected with Javon Livingston for a 45-yard blast that just uh, set the Bastrop Bears on their heels going into halftime. No time left on the clock. Nada Salas put it through to cap off the, what, the 70, what, it started down here at the 31, and there was like a penalty, and then there was this, and then so it ended up being like a, you know, like a 70-yard, 70 75-yard drive uh, with the penalty included. So the Bastrop Bears are going to tee it up to start the second half. The Eagles that deferred from the coin toss in the first uh, first half will be back to receive Javon Livingston and number eight. Is that high or is that – I can't see that far. It is. It looks like pain. Number three. Oh, it's no. Colton Fitzhugh, number nine. It is Colton nine. Fitzhugh. Back uh, his first game back this season after uh, nursing an injury, he got full clearance by the doctor to participate in tonight's game, and what a game to come back to! As 12 minutes showing on the clock to start the second half, Bastrop Bears getting ready to tee it off. Number 40, Armando Zamara kicks it off, and that's going to be caught at the 20-yard line. And here goes 20 with Dominique Mojica. And he's got nowhere to go, and he's slammed to the ground. And he's going to have forward progress. Looks like all the way to the 25-yard line. So about a five-yard return for Dominique Mojica as the Bastrop Bears special teams closed quickly to stop that run back with 11.53 left to go. Hunter Houston coming off a first-half high looks to take the Cedar Creek Eagles to the promised land. Starting first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Aaron Perales in the backfield. Ty Pruitt to the near side. Javon Livingston and Payne Allen to the top side. And now Payne Allen, or uh, Ty Pruitt comes to the right side. So we have an empty. Oh, now we got a flag as we're going to start the second half with a delay of game. That can't happen. No, nope, that's kind of not sure what happened that's there. That's interesting. But yeah, that's just a total neglect of the play clock there as it's going to start out first and 15 as the Eagles start the second half and negative yardage. Actually even because they picked up five on that run back. Now we're back to the original 20. First and 15, Hunter Houston drops back into the shotgun position. One setback, three receivers to the stop, stop side, left. Hash mark moving right to left or south to north. That ball's handed off to Prowse. He cuts back, second effort, gets over. He's going to end up getting called a little short as he was stopped quickly in the backfield. So that's going to bring up second down and 16 from the Cedar Creek 19-yard line. Now Colton Fitzhugh comes to the near side. Split left, two receivers to the top side. Snaps away, it's gonna be a sweep by Fitzhugh. Some Fitzhugh oh, right somebody completely missed their block. So that ball, that was nullified as the Eagles are starting back on their heels and they lose two more yards. So now it's gonna be third down and it looks like 18 as the Bastrop defense has shut down the run thus far here in the second half. Yeah, that was a wide receiver sweep for no gain. Yep, had a completely missed block on that one. Off the right hash mark, three receivers to the near side. We've got A.C. Collins in on that tight end on the right side. One setback, Houston waiting on the snap. He drops back. He rolls out to his left. He's under pressure. He's going to have to throw. He's going to air oh, it out, wow. and he's got an incomplete Ooh. pass as Colton Fitzhugh. Colton should have kept running. Was the intended receiver. If there was no reason for him to stop there. And the Eagles start the second half with a four and out. And the Bastrop Bears will be back to receive a punt. Deep for the Bears is going to be number 17, Tyson Tarver. 
Cedric Tarver. My bad. I get those two mixed up. Tyson is number 15. So there's nothing about the Bears that reminds me of the Seminoles. Yeah, I'm not sure where that whole <laughs> Indian thing is coming from. but All right, here's Hunter Houston from his own five. He lets one go, and that's going to be a good kick over the head of, Ty of Cedric Tarver. Great Cedar Creek bounce all the way down past the 30. It's going to come to rest right about the 27, 28-yard line where the Bears will start first and 10. What a great punt. That bump's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40. That's about a 63-yard punt for Hunter Houston. 25, 26, 27 yard line. 10-11 left to go in the third quarter. Eagles up on the Bears, 22 to eight. Out first series after receiving the kickoff, four and out. And now it's the Bears' turn to see if some momentum can be changed here as they were set on their heels pretty hard at the end of that first half where they'll start first and 10 deep in their own end at the 27 yard line. It looks like Alfred is taking a spell. He's not in the no, game. No, he's right there. Oh, there he is, I see him now. Yeah, he's right there. How can you miss him? <laughs> I don't know how I miss him, <laughs> to be honest with you. Biggest person on the field, not yeah. just kid. No, yeah. person. person. Yeah, he's like, he dwarfs. I mean, the kid's 6'5", 240 pounds. I think he's closer to 6'6". Six, six. He's probably getting real close to 250. He's I, think, on muscle. I think he's actually listed at 260. Oh, now. is he really? I think yeah. so. Yeah, he's putting muscle on. You can see it. Five well, yards for what? Did they have a delay as well? No, well, something happened, but it's going to go all the way back to the, that's actually Ooh. 10 yards. No, that's five yards, but all the way back to the 17-yard line. So oh, it's going to be first ten. and 10. I'm not sure why. The markers are still showing 10 yards. There's a snap. Desmond Young hands it off to Cedric. Uh, or to Jaquay okay. Creighton. He's on the left side. He's got runner room. He's up the sideline. Finally forced out of bounds. Enough yeah. for the first down all the way up to, it looks like he ran out of bounds at the 32-yard line. He's going to get marked way back, but still enough for the first down as the Bears start out the second half with positive yardage. Again, it's just uh, the same play. We've same got. sweep play was Jaquay Creighton. There's another pass. This time it's going to go to the other side. Oh, 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 great play. Alfred Collins saw that coming. Handoff or fake handoff, a play action to Jaquay Creighton. And Alfred Collins was there to read it. In fact, there's no gain on the play. And Desmond Young is stopped. Second down and 10. And barely got the line of scrimmage. That's how you single-handedly stop the zone read. When you're that big and can. <laughs> <laughs> so Desmond Young drops back. One setback. Three receivers to the bottom. One to the top. Desmond Young takes the snap. He's got high pursuit. Here comes Jake. Oh! 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 Away from him. Oh, my gosh. Hey, he's going to get him, though. Alfred uh, Collins slow to get up. That's not something we want to see, but Jacob Turner had him dead to rights. And after all that, Bastrop was able to get back a yard as Alfred throws his helmet off. Kate Edwards ended up getting to him. Desmond Young was running. So that was had the potential of being a real dangerous play. I don't know if he got leg whipped. I'm thinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank goodness. Yeah, he's up. I think he may have caught one in the uh, in the manhood. He might have. Yeah. I'm surprised he might even kick that high, but yeah. I guess. No, I think it whipped. That leg oh, whipped the whip. down. And yeah. I don't know if it got him in the thigh or got him in the. So Tyson or Cedric Tarver over to he's give him a little him. pat. Yes. Alfred picks up the trot off the side of the field. He'll be back yep. as soon as he gets his breath back. But Cedric Tarver, being the gentleman that he is, gave him a. Little Pat asked him if he was okay on the way off the field. Even though there's a lot of brutality that happens on this field between these two teams, there's still a lot of love when it comes to these local boys that have known each other and played youth football together, youth basketball together, you name it. They've been and known each other for a lot of years. So Desmond Young just came out of the game. Yeah, we got a change in quarterback. He's try he was over there trying to stretch a minute ago. So Desmond Young's on the sideline now. We have in the game number six. Nine, nine, nine. Number nine, I'm sorry. Romello Flores, Flores Giles. We're going to just call him Romello. Romello Giles. For sake of, uh, he's the backup quarterback. He drops back in the shotgun position. Four receivers split, two top, two bottom. There's a the handoff to Jaquay. He's got running room up got over the, the 40. Down. Gets the first down over to the, right at the first yard marker. 
Yeah, it's going to be a first down as you're going to mark it just past the 42-yard line. That's, a, so that's, that's a, third and nine, too. Yeah, but the first time they've been able to go up the middle because Alfred yeah. hadn't been in. So now Alfred Collins back in the game. Well, they got Alfred Collins in end now. Yeah, they're playing a the three-man. Oh, that's oh, a false start, start on Bastrop. False start on Bastrop on that left side. Might be. Yep, it's against Bastrop. Is that outside? Defensive end. I can't see the number. It's got a three in it. What is that number? Uh, it'll, be all, it'll be offensive tackle. Offensive tackle. Well, I think he might be playing tight end, actually. What did I say? De oh, I thought yeah. offensive tackle. I that said is number. End. So now Alfred Collins on the other side. It's going to drop back. Now it's first and 15. There's Giles drops out to the left side. And he's Ouch. hit hard right at the, first, at the line of scrimmage. Josh Nowhere Garza. to go as Josh Garza. Shut that down quickly with 8.19 left to go in the third. Eagles still up 22-8. to eight. Their first drive of the second half was a four and out. Bastrop now working on their possession, first possession of the second half. That false start was on Gabe Dowell, senior offensive tackle. So dropping back in the shotgun position with one setback, two receivers stacked on the top and on the bottom. He's looking to throw. He fades back. He's going to float one up. That ball turned around. Oh, Gosh, right. that yeah. might have been possibly intercepted, but that ball was thrown way, way, way out, of yeah. out of bounds. That's going to bring up third and long. We'll call it 15, third and 15 from the Bastrop 37-yard line. That route wasn't even open either, no. though. Desmond Young back in. So Desmond Young back in the lineup. Jaquay Creighton in the backfield. Play coming in from the sideline. Bastrop still... Not set yet as the playcock winds down to 14. Now a late entry into the game. Number 22, Nathan Blair, goes to the far side. So three receivers to the top side, one to the bottom. Five seconds left to go, waiting on the snap. Here's Desmond Young, rolls out to the left side. He's looking to throw. He drops it. Oh, and there's a nice hammer as Nathan Blair is the intended receiver. And he picks up about nine yards on the play. And it's still going to be fourth down and six for the Bears. Still in their own territory at the 47-yard line. 7.49 left to go in the third. Boy, they are, they're, they're taking some chances here. They are. They do not feel good about stopping our offense. So Desmond Young drops back. Same setup, two to the top, two to the bottom, playing off that left hash mark, one setback, waiting on the Trying snap. Trying to get to jump. They're going to punt. They're going to call a timeout punt, I think. So there's six seconds on the play clock. They're going to call probably a timeout here before this gets to delay a game. Timeout. Yeah, 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 I had to call timeout. They were trying to get us to jump. Yeah, they're not going to. We haven't had a problem with a lot of offsides on defense. The Eagles have nothing to gain by by rushing the, the snap. I mean, being up by 16 points. I don't think they're punting. Or 14 points, I mean. We'll see if they have not. If they're not going to punt, that was a complete waste of a timeout and clock management. So that's a plus for us. Because he was calling for the snap, trying to get a hard snap, and making us jump. And if they don't punt here, not only will we retain possession on our side of the ball, but they wasted a timeout. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we got we've got a double cover, Cedric Turver, on this one. This is the K Max Sports Network. Yeah, and here comes the offensive off, and the punt's going on, it yep, looks like. It does look like they're coming. Yeah. Well, here comes Cole Tidwell. He's going to drop back the punt for the – oh, now he's coming back off. They're having Isaac Guerra punt. Isaac Guerra, number 21, is going to punt this time. But yeah. the biggest problem that the special teams on Bastrop has been having is, first of all, that punt snap is like seven – like. That's that's seventeen yard snap right there. Yeah, the I don't even think I could have done that in my prime. And every ball thus far snapped to the punter has bounced off the turf except for one. So the long snappers have a difficult time getting it to the punter. This is a good one. He's gonna punt it away. He's, oh, he's gonna run it. It's a fake. He's gonna get shut down though. Nope, he's oh, gonna get the first down. Oh, first down is Bastrop. Fake punt. That's why they put that young that's man. That's why they in. put Gary in. Not sure why Eagles didn't key on that, thinking that they changed the punter as Jackson Bishop walks away limping for the Eagles. And they're marking the ball. And that's going to be a first down for the Bastrop Bears, as the referee indicates. That was a great fake punt by Guerrera. And the Eagles just unable to pick it up. They nearly had him, but it was good blocking by the 
special teams to make that happen. Well, Garza read it and closed down on it, but he just hadn't had the speed to, to stop it. Here is fast. Yeah. He yeah. So single coverage to the top side with Cedric Carver and Javon Livingston for the Eagles. And here goes and Desmond. That's what He's they're gonna doing. Throw they're they're going to throw it right to him. They're going to throw a double Safety cover. Help. Oh, Good incomplete play. pass. Great coverage by Jackson Bishop and Tarver's Javon Livingston as Tarver's Jackson down. Bishop came all the way across to assist Javon Livingston. Tarver's on the, on the turf, slow to get up. He came down. He went up high for that ball and came down right on his backside, so he may have just got shaken up a little bit. Jackson Bishop did a great yeah, job about disguising what he was doing. You, were just, you just took the words out of my mouth. That was Another a half a step or maybe even one step, and uh, Jackson Bishop got a really good shot at an interception there as he made great tracking across yeah. that secondary Desmond to never shut that saw down. Him. He never saw the safety coming. He thought he had one. He thought he had man coverage. That's a great disguise. You're exactly right. So we have an injury timeout here with 7:33 left to go. Eagles up 22 to eight over the Bears here in middle of the third quarter. Cedric is up under his own power and walking off the field. So we're sure we will see him back again as the competitor that he is. They've been having a little bit of a cramping issue here. Bastrop has. You it's see really hot and humid out there tonight. It's, it's I mean, 82 as of now. And the humidity is probably 120 percent, if that's as possible. Well. <laughs> Let's see. So he's off the field. 81. And the Bastrop Bears are going to be third down and ten from the Cedar Creek 45 yard line. 40. We'll call it the 44 yard line. The Bears are moving left to right. Playing off that right hash mark, they're going to split two receivers to the top, two yeah, to the bottom. He's cramping. Jaquay Creighton in the backfield with Desmond Young under center. Drops back in that shotgun position. Play called to his offensive line. Creighton moves over to the right shoulder. Waiting on the snap. A second down and 10. Quick throw. That's right. down to 22. Guerrero. First or, I'm sorry, again. not Guerrero. That's Blair. Now, for another bass drop first down. Mm. Just a little bubble screen there. And Who made that tackle? Uh, I think 33. That's what I thought, too. So Reggie Smith with a tackle, but not before a bass drop bear first down. First and 10 at the 30. There's, There's a handoff to Creighton. The Creighton bro oh. nearly breaks one tackle, uh, but Turner. Jacob Turner grabs onto him and only holds him to looks like three yards where it'll be second down and seven. And Jacob, that's two or three times a night. He is one-handed. One-handed. Creighton yeah. and said, no, sir. <laughs> Not my side. Second down and seven from the Cedar Creek 27-yard line. Desmond Young drops back. There's Creighton again. No, he's going to keep Keeper. it. He's going to throw it out to the left to Nathan Blair again. Got a little running room. And another bass drop first down inside the 15 to it looks like the 14-yard line. Bass drop bears first and 10. In the red zone. Yeah, we're going to play a little bit tighter coverage on that kid. He's super fast. Um, who is that, number five? Damian Perez, Damian Perez is just playing a little bit off of him. He's a sophomore corner. He needs to, he's going to have to get in that kid's pocket. 6.38 to go in the third quarter. Bastrop threatening. There's Young. Young throws it out quick in Same the slot. Point. Slant pass out there. This time he's got Cole Tidwell. And Cole. Gets taken down inside the 10-yard line at the 9-yard line. 45 on the tackle. Where it'll be They're set. second down and five, second down and six for the Bears. They're starting to take advantage of that loose coverage we got in that slot position. Yeah, it was the exact same play just to the top side. Two splits to the top, two to the bottom. This time they're wide spread to the near side. Desmond Young drops back one setback. This time he hands it off to Jaquay Creighton uh, again. He's, he's got, got a lot of running room. Touchdown. Oh, and he dives and gets into the end zone. Bastrop Bear touchdown. So we had Jaquay a play, Creighton. We had a blitz on this side. Reggie blitzed, but the play was away from Reggie. Kate tried to make the stop, but Creighton just kind of supermaned over him. So a complete different defense on the second half than we saw in the first half for the Cedar Creek Eagles. 22 to 14. As number 24 for the Bears is on for the extra point, that's Diego Cruz. Told bad Tidwell, snap. there's a bad snap. He's going to run it out, and he's got some room. He's got and it. Gets it in for a two-point conversion. 
Cole Tidwell with a bad snap was able to pick it up and run it into the right side corner for the two point conversion. Cedar Creek 22, Bastrop Bears 16. Who is it on the run? Cole Tidwell, Cole Tidwell. number three. So that was all set up on a fourth and long snake uh, punt. Yep. We had him stopped. All right, so I'm sure the Eagles are over on the opposite sideline getting a talking to by head coach John Edwards. That is not the same defensive team we saw in the first half, nor the offense as far as that's concerned. So the Eagles and the Bears have each shared one possession. Bears coming on top with a touchdown run by Jaquay Creighton and then a fumbled snap on the extra point gave Cole Tidwell the opportunity to run it in for the two-point conversion. 22 to six, one possession game. Eagles in favor. You know, we haven't had, we haven't had as fast as Javon is. I'm surprised we haven't had a run back for a return for a touchdown on yeah. kickoff. They're kicking it short. They're kicking it to the Yeah, up they're kicking to the, like the 30 yard line where, but usually that's where Ashton is. Ashton's to the near side right here, right? I believe that is Ashton. All right, so the Bears spread out. Ball's sitting on the 40. No, it's 21. Oh, it's 21. So oh, that's it's Mojica. Mo Dominique Mojica. There's Ooh, a kick. Oh, they're going to kick this one offside. deep off the left side. And that one's going to be got by Colton Fitzhugh. He starts up in the middle. Oh, nowhere to go. And he's hammered hard. At about the 23-yard line where the Eagles will start first and 10. With 72. Eight yards to go. <laughs> Five four forty eight to go in the third. I think Colton Fitzy was looking at a little different of outcome on that one there. He started running and then stopped rather dramatically. Yeah, his uh, his seam went away. All right, so the Cedar Creek Eagles are gonna start first and ten from their own twenty two yard line. Ty Pruitt's lined up way off size. I'm not sure exactly where he's Standing there. Well, it looks like he's lined up with the referee. There's a snap and a handoff. Aaron Perales up the middle picks up That's about Mojica. five on the play. That's Mojica. I'm sorry. Picks up about five on the play. Gonna, no, that was Aaron Perales. 21? Oh, no, it's 21. You're right. Oh. Now he's cramping now, too. He's cramping. He sprained his ankle. Somebody needs to look at that. He's a running back. Take a knee. Fall down. Do something. You can't even put any weight on it. This is bad. There's a handoff up the middle, and that one looks like it's to Perales. It is. There's a flag on the play. Looks like we might have a, a, a late flag. This one might be a personal foul against Bastrop. Nope. In Cedar Creek? Yep. Uh, have to be holding. Really? Like that's what we really don't need. Uh, where, like, have, where have y'all been all night? Because it's been going the other way all night. So there's a 15-yard penalty against the Cedar Creek Eagles. Drops the ball all the way back to the Cedar Creek 15-yard line. This is a completely different team than we saw the first half. I don't understand. I and mean, this is crazy. The intensity is like gone out of Memorial Stadium. So we got single coverage top side, one safety. So three receivers to the bottom side, one to the top like Scotty indicated, single coverage. That looks like uh, Ty Pruitt. Cover three. Shotgun position, now Hunter rolls out. He's got a lot of pressure. Oh, oh that should have been a face there. mask. That should have been a face mask. Grabbed onto his helmet, pulled him down. No flag on the play. Drops him all the way back to the 10, and the Eagles are going to have to punt. That's going to go down as a sack for Hunter Houston. As they lost 15 yards on that play. 14 yards from the original line of scrimmage. It's fourth down and 25 right now as it sits. Hunter Houston standing in his own end zone. Deep for the Bears, looks like. Is that Cedric? 
And Hunter Houston lets one go. It's going to bounce at about the 45-yard line. Takes a bass drop bounce. It's going to stay right at the 45-yard line. And it's going to come away as a 35-yard punt for Hunter Houston as the Bears will start in Eagle territory first and 10. The Cedar Creek defense needs to dig deep. Well, we got to we got to get dig deep. we got to get number four stopped because if it's not number four, it's twenty-two. We got to stop him too. But we have come out flat in the third quarter. I think flat's underestimating no, it. I think we got real conservative in our first drive in the third quarter too. Yeah, you can't sit down with a team, but these two teams like this, you can't all of a sudden sit on a lead. Like I mean, that's just. There's some bass drop players on the sideline being tended to. There's like just a lot of okay, cramping here we issues go. out there. They're gonna go. They're gonna go one on one down here. They got so we got top. three receivers to the top. This time Desmond Young. Oh, he's gonna be stopped quickly. Oh, nice pitch Late to pitch. Creighton. He's got running room. And he's gonna get dragged down about the 40. He's gonna pick up six yards on the play. Great play by great play by uh, Desmond Drake Young. Basically. He was in the grasp of going down and was able to get that ball pitched to Jaquay Creighton as he picked up some yardage. Picked up six on the play. It'll be second down and four as the Bears move the ball. Yeah, Jacob had him dead to right. They're underestimating the speed here in the second half of the Bass Drop Bears. Here's the snap. This one's given to Jaquay up the right side. He's got a hole. He goes down, but he's going to get close to the first yard marker. First down mark is going to be short by a yard. It's like it's going to be third down and one after the carry by Creighton. Caden Garza on the tackle. Trips to the top side again. Desmond Young hands it off to Creighton. He buzz up this side. He's got the first down up over the 35, down near the 30. We're going to call about the 32-yard line, where it's going to be first down and 10 for the Bears. Jo Josh Gars again on the stop. Is it 52? It's 52. Oh, is that Mirage? Yeah. Oh, Alfred Collins with a big hit. wide open. Flag pass, on the pass, play. Pass on the oh, and, and it pass was. interference on Cedar and it Creek. Was. It oh, was. Man, oh, man. And the wheels kind of bust come off. Yep. They Damian. come off hard. Damian Jackson got there in time if he just turned his head. That was, uh, was that Jackson that made that play? That was five, I think. Damian Perez. Perez. He got there. He just needed to turn around. He had good. I mean, he got there in plenty of time. I think he thought he was beat worse than he was. So it's boiling down to 2:28 here in the third quarter. Bastrop Bears threatening in the red zone as the Cedar Creek Eagles decide to call timeout. Try to figure out what the heck is going on here. That was a broken coverage. He went wide open well, down the field. Well, and as, as he threw the ball, Alfred Collins Alfred obli it. obliterated him. So unnecessary penalty by the Eagles puts the Bastrop Bears in striking distance at the 12-yard line. It's going to be first down and 10. The Eagle defense has to, has to dig deep and figure out a way to stop Jaquay Creighton and Desmond Young as this second half they came out mean in business and catching the Cedar Creek Eagles on their heels hard. This crowd's going to go nuts. First so, big shout-out to Lori Tuggle. She's listening in from her son's uh, football game in downtown Memphis. Really? Yeah. So, hello, Lori. All right, Desmond Young drops back. Got... Creighton in the backfield, two to the bottom, one to the top. Desmond Young looking to throw, looking to the end zone. Touchdown, touchdown Bears. Up 22. Nathan Blair with the touchdown. And the flag on the play, too. Hopefully it's on Bastrop. No, it's on us resting the passer. This is kind of an important extra point. Oh, 
All right, the Bastrop Bears go up on top, and the Cedar Creek are actually tied right now at 22, extra point pending. The snapper for the Bastrop Bears has been less than consistent tonight. As Cold Tidwell is the holder, Cruz for the extra point. That's a 13. He's no, not on the 13. roster. Yeah, he's not on the roster. I'm thinking it's Cruz. So waiting on the snap. Extra point pending. Just wouldn't be any other way if it wasn't a close game. It's on the ground. Oh, almost blocked. Almost, almost, got almost it. blocked. And that's going to put the Bastrop Bears on top. 23 to 22. Here with 2.23 left to go in the first or the third quarter. You're listening to K-Max Sports, the Creed broadcast team on the Vite Media Network. The Roscoe State Bank is proud to bring you the excitement of Cedar Creek Athletics on the Creek Network and K-Max Sports. Cedar Creek Eagles, best drop bear. And a showdown it is as the Bastrop Bears go on top. 23 to 22 after two unanswered scores here in the second half. Well we answered, yeah. I mean we don't have a we don't have a answer for Creighton. And that's that's our problem right now. Well we did in the first half more or less. But it seems yep. like the wind has gone out of the sails a little bit. Two two and outs. You know. To start the second half, like Scotty said, two two and outs. We're gonna start the this uh, kickoff here after a 15-yard penalty, so the Bastrop Bears are actually going to be kicking off in Eagle territory at the 45-yard line. So this has a tendency to pin the Eagles deep in their own zone if it doesn't go out of the end zone. Javon Livingston back deep for the Bear or for the Eagles, standing on his own four-yard line. Look for a possible onside kick here would be the advantage for the Bastrop Bears. No, he kicks it away. That was going to go out. Let it go out the end zone. There yep. you go. That goes out of the end zone. And that's going to be a touchback, and the Bear or Eagles will come out. And I think it's a blessing in disguise to start their own 25-yard line, first and 10. So now k showing us as a live game versus Brenham. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You're looking. Oh, wow, this is live. Mm -hmm. And a refresh three times. Look under next. It's good to we'll see figure. we got Payne Allen back out on the field. All right, Payne Allen's back after taking that hard shot in the first half. Hunter Houston, one setback, one receiver to the top, one to the bottom. Looks to the sideline for the play change coming in. Bastrop has shut down the Eagles so far here in the second half. Eagles need to get something started. There's a handoff to Mojica, nowhere to go. That was a blast. He's going to go back for yardage, and now the momentum has definitely changed in the Bastrop Bear advantage here is number six for the Bears. Gets into that, on that blitz. Fazion Madison with the sack. Second down and 12. The wind, I mean, this just you can just tell by the body language of the Eagles on offense that it's just it's not, it's something's something's wrong. Something's just not the same. Well, they're dare they're, they're just slow to they're just slow to do everything. There's no pep in the step. There's no nothing. There's Houston. He rolls out to the right. He's gonna throw. He's got a go. short throw. Is it complete? Yeah. There's something. Only going. picks up three yards on the play, no, but it's it was, something. It was uh, second and twelve. Second and twelve picks up three. So now it's third and nine. It was eight. Eight is Payne Allen. So that reception by Payne Allen after returning to the game for the first time since the first half. Third and long, Eagles need to convert here just for any kind of momentum whatsoever. Bastrop momentum is, or is definitely in Bastrop's favor right now. Drops back, one setback. Here's another out. blitz. Houston looking to throw. He's got one up there. And oh, he's got oh, he's oh my God, he held and on. No to penalty. Him. No ridiculous. penalty. It he is held on. To, ridiculous. Held on to Payne Allen like he was luggage. Bastrop got away with one there. This is the way it usually works. 
That's the way it usually works in these games. Oh, 110 left to go in the third. Cedar Creek having to punt it away again. Third possession of four and out to start the second half. Yeah, they're going to have uh, we don't, you know, we never complain <laughs> about the referees, but they're going to start, they're going to yeah. throw a flag eventually. Yeah. Here's Houston with the punt. You know, under a lot of pressure. Gets a good one away. It's going to hit at about the 35-yard line. And that's going to be picked up by Cedric Tarver, and he's got nowhere to go. And there comes a helmet off the play. Man, I wish that was the football. Yeah, no kidding. He's going to be down. I'm not sure whose helmet the that was on the yard. There comes a flag. And that's going to be on us again. We're losing our cool on a great play. It's always the second guy that gets called, so I'm sure it was. Whose time was it? Oh, it's just Starver. Cedric's helmet. Okay. Yeah, that's a 35. Or no, yeah, about the 30, and then he ran backwards. So it was a flag on the play. All the indications point to Cedar Creek on this. As the, like Sam said, they're kind of losing their composure out there. And they have uh, not a lot of time to regain it with 58 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Bastrop up 23 to 22. After two unanswered scores here in the second half. Looks like the Mustangs went home. They've seen enough. Burton a foul on Bastrop. Oh, I don't think I was that. against Bastrop. Ejected. Oh, wow. Ejected. Which one? Goodbye. Cedric Tarver got ejected. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Oh, wait a minute. Pretty sure. He said the player's been ejected. So he's making some gesture down here on the sideline. I'm not sure exactly. Cedric Tarver. So he did something or said something after getting his helmet ripped off. So if he's ejected, I think he has to leave the field, does he not? So that's going to take the ball all the way back to the Bastrop 10-yard line where the Bears will start first and 10. Losing Cedric Tarver really isn't a big deal. That's I, a, mean, I think that's a huge deal. Well, I mean, other than that uh, that possibility, that one-on-one -on -one coverage on that outside, but, I mean, it's been Jaquay, uh, Creighton, and Nathan Blair well, the whole, whole time. on the They're having so much because we have to double-team in him most of the time, so we're taking a guy yeah, out of there. Yeah, Tarver's gone. So they're actually calling a police officer over now. Here goes Tarver. He's leaving the field. I mean, not, that sounded bad. The police officer's just there to escort him off to right, make sure he safety. gets back to the safe the safety. Ooh, that safety. almost was a pick. <laughs> so first, first Dalen play. Jackson keyed in on that one. That pass intended for number twenty three, Chris Henderson, incomplete second and ten. What'd you say? Hmm. Sorry. What'd you say? No, no, it was incomplete. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and then, then t yeah, the cop was just there to escort him to safety. Yeah, yeah, just making sure. I mean, even though it's on the bass drop side, they still do it. Yeah. Pete, how's yeah. our signal? Our signal's good. Why? Are we not hearing anything? Yeah, uh, I just got a text that it's off again. But I don't know. I'm showing on. Hand off. Pat, hand off the Crete, and he bounces to the outside. He's got running room. He's going to get the first down marker at the 20-yard line as the uh, Eagles still have no answer to Jaquay Creighton. Makes you wonder that if he wouldn't have got hurt in that game last year early, what he would have done to us. He's super fast. He's really fast. He's fast and he's quick. He can change directions in a heartbeat. First and 10 for the Bears at the Bear 21-yard line. Desmond Young has a snap. Hands it off to Creighton again. He bounces to the outside without any hesitation and gets to the first down yarker marker again. And it's going to get run out of bounds right at the 30-yard line. It's going to be a yard short of the first down, actually. Yeah. So it's going to be second and two. Something you don't see very often, but he left, one. he left Alfred Collins grabbing air. Uh-huh. Yep. He switched directions so quickly that they just don't have an answer for Jaquay. He is the basically the bass drop offense right now. And comes a fullback. Oh, he's bringing in a big guy. Jaquay Creighton coming out for the first time in the game. And now into the game is lead blocker fullback, number 45, Noe Torres. And that's a handoff. We sweep to the outside. He's being pursued. Nowhere to go. He's going to get oh. knocked down hard. Reggie. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Reggie Smith and Cade Edwards in on the 
force out of bounds on the tackle, number 32, Eddie Brown, who's been called for so many offsides and hold, or so many holdings tonight, is actually the running back there, and he's going to get thrown for loss yard. He's going to be third down and four as they lost three on the play. Great pursuit by Reggie Smith and Cade Edwards. But Eddie Brown almost broke that away as, uh, I don't know, who, as it was uh, Reggie Smith that just had it held onto him by a T-shirt. And that's going to end the third quarter with your Cedar Creek Eagles down 23-22 to the Bastrop Bears after the Bastrop Bears came out to make a statement this second half with two unanswered scores, but they're still trapped deep in their own end as they're walking off. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought they were walking off a penalty. <laughs> they just moving together into the field. <laughs> that's a big penalty. That's like a 70-yard penalty. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to stay right here because, frankly, I'm tired of hearing the same advertisements over and over and over. <laughs> That's just me, though. So now the uh, K-Mac deal is failing to load the score box for me to update, so I've, okay. I've re-signed uh, You them. know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here and just just yeah. forget about that. Something just yeah. updated. What was that? No, it's just running across, but it thinks we're yeah. still here because I can't get it. To it won't it. even let you yeah. update that score? No. No. If you're needing to follow us via um, – print or good luck yeah <laughs> all i can tell you we got 900 visitors on max prep so follow all right. us on max prep Oop, i just that's too weak uh oh that was me that was all me he may be a one-man gang here in a minute creighton's back in now all right jaquay creighton back in for the bass drop bears in the backfield it's third down and four for the bears they're moving right to left now, off that right hash mark. There's a snap, hands off to Creighton. He bounces out. Oh, he's got nowhere. Oh, he breaks the tackle, breaks two tackles, and maybe picks up one yard after all that. It's going to be fourth and three for the Bears. Kate had him, but he shook Kate in the backfield. Reggie Smith calling for a replacement. He comes up limping. And coach is saying, suck it up, buttercup. Watch the punt. What's the fake? Is that Garrett back there again? Yes. Got Ashton Figueroa back deep for the Bear or for the Eagles as the punt. It's going to be an actual punt this time, and it's a pretty good one. Calls for a fair catch at the Cedar Creek 37-yard line where the Eagles will have their best field position so far in the second half with 11-18 left to go in the fourth quarter. Bastrop Bears 23, Cedar Creek Eagles 22. This is the K-Max Sports Network. And the Vite Media Network. And Vite Live Media. from Memorial Stadium. 37-yard line. The hoedown on Highway 21 is never fails to please as... Yep, we got Bast a game. Bastrop Bears came to play this second half. What looked like the Eagles, with the way they were playing in the first half, were Looks really like we not, necessarily, not necessarily run away with it, but... We definitely had the advantage and the momentum. It's like Hunter Houston's coming out of the game for a reason. And just Ashton Figueroa. Not sure what. He's bleeding. Oh, he's uh -oh. got something, a little something on his elbow there. So Figueroa getting his uh, debut tonight, or at least for tonight. He's been in before. This is the second play he's played this season on the field. As quarterback drops back, one setback, four receiver split, two in top. Here, Figueroa keeps this one. There go. Over the 40, down to the 45, near a first down marker as Ashton Figueroa picks up eight on the play. It's going to be second down and two as Houston comes back in. And Figueroa gets up yeah. slow because one of the – 82 kind of – Yeah, one of the players for Bastrop decided to use him as a welcome mat. Essentially exactly what he did with his knees and elbows. Yeah. Just unnecessary. It always happens every every game we play. When these two rivalries meet, it always it ends up, always ends up like this. It really does. I mean, it's 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 very difficult for me because there's a lot I can't say that I want to say, right. and it's very very frustrating because year after year after year they continue to come out and play like this, and it's just there's just no call for it. Right. Well, we do have you a know. new AD, and he is he is and one of his main goals is to clean everything up. You know, yeah. just clean clean programs up. Then him and Coach Patman will have him a meeting tomorrow. Probably so. Uh, yeah, well, that remains to be seen. We'll see. 
we've been been there, done that before. This is our third athletic director we've had in this since we've started all this. So we've got uh, Tyson at linebacker now, Tarver. All right, Houston drops back with one setback, four receiver split. There's handoff to Perales up the middle. He's got some yards over the 50 down into Bastrop territory. He's coming up a little bit slow, but he's got the Eagle first down all the way down to the bare 44-yard line as the Eagles finally start to move the ball with their first and only first down in the second half. Well, he's so short. When you go low to tackle him, there's just not a lot of real estate between nothing, ankle and knee. Yeah, there's nothing to grab onto. So him. you kind of got to get him in the knee. So a play change coming in from the sideline. Three receivers split to the top side. We got Ty Pruitt, Javon Livingston, and we have number seven, uh, Vin Clark. And down to the near side, we had Payne Allen and Aaron Perales in the backfield waiting on the snap. Houston, hole up the middle. Oh, nowhere to go. He's going to be swallowed up and maybe lose one on the option play or quarterback keeper up the middle. He's going to lose one yard. It's going to be second down and 11. Yeah, it was a zone read run all the way, I think, by quarterback. It was a sneak all the way. So same setup, three to the top, one to the bottom. Houston has a play change coming in from the sideline. 10-14 to go in the game. Eagles down by one. You know, we have not gone deep the entire second half. We've only thrown three passes in the second half. Houston drops back. He's in the pocket. Oh, he got oh, hit as he, he got hit right as he threw. Hit his arm. Hunter Houston trying to plead his case to the referee. He's not going to throw a flag because they haven't all night. Pruitt was for open. that matter. Pruitt was wide open, and it just happened to get his arm or something right as he was throwing through. How are we going to be so explosive Third down 11. in the first half and come out and oh, run? I'm, I'm speechless. The entire yeah, I am too. I'm speechless when it comes to that. I am too. Well, we change the way we play, I think, a little bit. Got to get back to being that's aggressive. Going, that's going to bite us in the butt. I don't understand why you would change. Why, no, why? Cha why do you change something that's working? I can't. I just. I find that hard to believe. Yeah. Houston drops back, throwing to the outside. He's got one. That ball's incomplete. It. It's going to bring down fourth down and eleven. Yep. That's a big drop. We weren't. We weren't up fifty to nothing, so we should not have changed anything. Foot on the pedal. Get up by four or five scores. So that's going to bring up another punting situation for the Eagles. This is a, a, a good place to sneak right here. Is Kate Edwards in? He's snapping the ball. Yeah. This is a good place for Hunter to. Kate snapping. We've got Figueroa on the inside along with Aaron Perales. And there's Hunter Houston. He's looking for it. Nope. He's looking Kate. for it. He's going to go ahead and punt it away. Good that kid. ball is going to come down at the 21-yard ah. line. Takes a bass drop bounce. All the way back outside the 20 yard line to about the 22. As the Bears will start first and 10 from their own 22 yard line. You can just look. You can look on the field, look at the two teams. They look like the Cedar Creek looks like the air has completely gone out of their sails as Bastrop has completely. They're, they're jumping and high fiving and bouncing, you yeah. know, whatever they're doing to celebrate. Um, every time they come off the field or go on the field. So every every play they're considering a victory. Well, in tonight. all honesty, we've kind of stopped playing a little bit offensively and a defensively. Little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. we've I given know. up two. I'm, being, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be optimistic here. I really am. That's Jaquay Creighton. He runs off the, pops off the outside. There's, Kate, yeah, there's a great, great tackle by Cade Edwards as he hunts down Jaquay Creighton. Catches them in the backfield for a loss of like two, but there is a flag on the play. It's probably going to be backside holding against Eddie Brown again. <laughs> is that 16 for for Cade? 16 or 17? Uh, I have no. I have 11 and a half. 11 and a half. So that means he's only got a tackle on half the entire second half. So they're going to decline that. They're going to take the loss on the play, and that brings up. Wait a minute. Why would we decline that? It would have made it. It would have made first it first and twenty versus second and twelve. Yeah, it is kind of confusing. All right, Desmond Young. He has a ball. He's going to look in the throw. He's got 
Oh, no flag on the play. He had all kinds of contact there. Wow. I wonder good what's good for the goose is good for the gander, I guess. Looks like uh, Dalen Jackson got away with that one there. Dalen Jackson got away with it because his head was turned looking for the ball. Yeah. yeah he's beat. So that pass was intended for number 17, or number 12, I'm sorry, number 12 for the Bastrop Bears, Davion Strong. Or Donovan Strong, I'm sorry, Donovan Strong. Broken up by Dalen Jackson. Third down and 12 for the Bears. Desmond Young has the ball. He's fading back. He's looking to throw. He's going off the right side. That ball's going to be way overthrown. And that's going to bring up fourth and 12. Yeah, so good coverage, top side. Good coverage by Ashton I, Figueroa on the I, outside there. I do not understand that play calling. Well, it turns out to be that the penalty being declined was actually the Eagles' advantage as Bastrop Bears are going to be forced to punt. But back in the punting position is number 21 again. Isaac Guerrero, the last time he was in. He did punt it the last time he was in. Yeah, there's two oh, times he ran ago. It. That was uh, two, two times, times ago. ago. No, it seems like all one big blur. Get away, he gets get that away. one away. Comes down at the 45-yard line. Takes a bass get drop bounce. Takes a bass drop bounce all the way down to the 32-yard line where the Eagles will start first and 10 with 9-0-1 left to go in the fourth quarter. Bears still up by one, 23-12. I don't know what he was doing, even around it. Who was that? Ashton Figueroa. Ashton Figueroa. Figueroa. What are you kidding? You're, you're asking for one of two things to happen. It's going to bounce wrong and hit you, and, and Bastrop's going to recover, or you're going to get blown up. Neither one of them is pleasant. No, and neither one of them is pleasant. All right, so the Eagles are going to start first and 10 from their own 32-yard line with 9-0-1 left to go in the game. Down by one to the Bears. Hunter Houston drops back three to the top, one split to the bottom, one setback. That hands off to Perales. He breaks up the middle. He's got running room. He's at the 40, the 35, and finally brought down in midfield right at the near 50. the 50 Whoa, yard line. Whoa, that's a bad spot. And one bass drop player down on his. He was walking, then all of a sudden decided to sit down, take Cramp. advantage of the cramp of the change being moved here so that ball is going to be placed at the 49 yard line yeah that was a pretty sorry spot but nonetheless it's an eagle first down on an Aaron Perales picks up what's that nearly 20 17 yards on the carry almost 18 yards looking at the spots kind of just short of the 49 yard line yeah, so we were at the 32 42 yeah 17 yards, 8.55 to go in the game as number 82 for the Bears. Zavon Burnett comes off under his own power. Seven. Seven? Seven Burnett. Seven What did I say? Barnett. Zavon. Zavon Burnett. Zavon. You're trying to make right. it sound exotic and it's not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Three splits at the top, one at the bottom. Houston gets the play change from the uh, sideline. This time we got Dominique Mojica in the backfield. I'm surprised we haven't done a quick pass to, uh, honestly, to uh, Javon with all the room they're giving us there. There's a handoff to Mahika. He gets up over the 50. He takes a hard hit and picks up two on the play. Actually, we're going to give him one. Another bad spot. I don't know. Maybe they're good spots. They sure look like bad spots from here. But he picks up one, so it's going to be second down and nine. As the Bears get a play, or the Eagles get a play change. how good those play changes are doing. So how good is his leg? What's our target? We need to get to the 20, 15 yard line? 20 yard line would be nice. Houston with a quick throw to the outside. Payne Allen picks it up and almost breaks the tackle, but he's brought down inside bass drop territory at about the 45 yard line. Oh, we're gonna call it the 44 yard line. Or 46 yard line, I'm sorry. It's on the other side of the white line. 46-yard line where it's going to be third down and five for the Eagles. Mohica in the backfield. Haven't seen Aaron Perales this whole series right here since that last draw, last run he had of 17 yards. He's been out ever since. This would be a good side for a blitz, I mean for a screenplay right here. Mohica in the backfield, three there split. There's a shot out there to Payne Allen. He gets to the 40 near the first down marker. You're going to mark it right at the 40-yard line. And that should be enough for an eagle first down as they move the chains and keep the play alive. 
Payne's almost broke those last two plays. Payne getting up a little gingerly there. Three splits at the top, or two splits at the top. We'll call one in the slot as Bing Clark hasn't seen any much action tonight in that slot position. One set back with Mojica. Houston, hand off Mojica. He cuts back to the middle at the 35. Oh, and he's tripped up hard, but he gets close to the first down marker. He's going to be down to the 32-yard line as he picks up seven yards on a play. It's going to be second down and three with 740 left to go in the game. Like Brian George is just a little ginger getting up, but Aaron Prowse back in the backfield as Houston calls out his play. Three splits to the top side, one to the bottom side, playing off the right hash mark. Eagles moving from left to right or north to south. Depends how you look at it. Here's a snap. Houston rolls out to the left, looking to throw right in the middle of the field. He's got a receiver, and that's Finn Clark. I just spoke too soon as he gets a key reception, gets inside the 20 to the 18, 19 yard lines where they're going to spot the ball. And the Eagles have a first down in the red zone. Really beautiful play by Vin Clark just sitting down in a wide open zone there. Yeah, he was. He was there all alone saying, throw it to me. As Vin Clark picks up his first reception, I think ever. <laughs> I haven't called his name before. He drops back over in the slot. Two splits to the top side. One to the bottom, or two to the bottom side with Payne Allen and Javon Livingston. Ty Pruitt, nothing heard from him this second half. His first half was all Ty Pruitt. In the slot is Vin Clark. Houston drops back. Perales in the backfield. Right dead center in the middle of the field. Houston waiting on the snap. He's looking to throw. He's got one right in the middle. Great catch by Vin Clark again to get down near the 13-yard line. Maybe the 12 they're going to give it. And that's going to be second down and two as Vin Clark tallies two back-to-back -back receptions to keep the Eagles drive moving. Somebody listening must have told Coach Edwards, hey, the guys upstairs said start passing the ball. Yeah, start passing. Yeah, not only that, but start passing to people that can catch it, like Vin Clark. <laughs> Just listen to the guys in the booth. We're the, we got it figured out. We got a better vantage point. All right, shotgun position, one setback. Here's a snap. He hands out to Perales. He cuts back. He's over to 10. He's got some running room now. Eagle touchdown. Aaron Perales. That was all, all Aaron Perales. What great footwork. He dodged like four tackles. To bust that end zone, Eagles go up 28 to 23. I go for two because either way they have to score a touchdown, and if they do score a touchdown. Well, either way, there's going to be a timeout on the field to talk about it. With 6.04 left to go, the Eagles go up on a great piece of running and passing for that matter. Eagles, uh, Houston connects with Vin Clark twice on that last series right there to put the Eagles in striking distance, and none other than Aaron Perales stabs it in from 12 yards out. We were four, we were four for four on passing that, yep. that drive. That's what you call the pass setting up the run. So 6.04 to go. Eagles up by five right now. If they kick the extra point, it'll be six. So like Sam said, Bastrop comes down if they score. If we don't hold them, I think this is going to put a little more pepper in the defense's stepper coming so out on this well, one not that, here. They've had so. a chance to catch their breath. Right. Because that play took. That's true. I mean, that whole first, that whole second half, the defense was on the field practically yep. up until now. Yeah. Yeah, this is a big play for our defense. This is what this is what they're here for. This so is let's what they see. Do. I don't see a. I don't see a kicker. I don't see a Salas out there. Yeah, it makes sense to go for two here. This will force Bastrop to score and a two-point conversion. But Houston in the shotgun position. He's got Perales in the backfield. He's got Ben Clark and Ty Pruitt to the top side. Payne Payne Stewart. <laughs> Payne Allen. And Devon Livingston, by the way, Payne Stewart's dead. <laughs> um, Deville, uh, Livingston goes in motion. He's got Houston wide open. De oh, oh dropped, dropped it. it. Dropped it. Had it in his hands. Javon Livingston comes up short. He had the ball in his hands. The ball was thrown behind him. He had to come back and turn around for it. But nonetheless, it was a completely catchable ball. And the Eagles come up short on the point after. But they are still on top by five as the Eagle defense is going to have to come up big to stop the Bastrop Bears. They are. They have to score a touchdown. Field goal does no good here, so that forces them to have to score a touchdown. 
we need we need our defense just to get back to dominating. Yeah, it would be nice to shut them down right here. And I think we're up to our highest view count ever on max press at 1,280. Oh, wow. really? Yeah. Wow. You think it's just the same person hitting it 1,200 times? I don't know how they scored. I'd have to, <laughs> let me, I'll find that out, though. <laughs> like, on our views, is that one person coming 1,200 times, or is, that 12, <laughs> or is that 1,200 unique IP addresses? Well, I mean, there's a lot of people across the region that understand the, the meaning of this rivalry. Yeah, a lot of graduates you from know, the this is the, the Cedar Creek Eagles have never beat the Bass Drop Bears at football. We've come close. Last year, 21-23, it's really shaping up to be another burner like that one as the Eagles tee it up on the 40 to get ready to kick it away. Really hoping that the Eagles twid are still not working? No. No, neither is the KMAC board. board, board. Short kick. Kicks away short to up back at the 32. Up to the oh. Oh, you nearly broke that. Wow. That's going to oh, be a oh, fumble. Ball, ball's oh, on well, the ground. Where is it? They oh, there's some, they pushing, there's some pushing and shoving Man, going no, on no, here. Don't do it. Reggie don't. is so violent. When he tackles you. That was Reggie Smith with that hit? With yeah. a, yes. He is so violent. If you remember back to the Reagan game, he's the, he's the he's bowling ball. He knocked out ball that, their team. Right. He's the bowling ball that knocked yep. out those two kids. He's just so violent of a player, and and not mean violent, but no, he just hits with he, violent yes. intentions. He drives through his tackles, he lowers his hips. I mean, he's just a really sun, fundamental football player. All right, so the Bass Drop Bears are starting in decent field position. They're all the way at their own 40-yard line when Des Desmond Young comes, along with Jaquay Creighton, Creighton to uh, see what they can do with the Eagles right now. So far. They've been successful the second half. There's Jaquay up the middle. Oh, and flag. there's a penalty, a flag on the play. It should be a false start. Yep, false start. On the Bass Route Bears again. It's going to back it up five, so it's going to be first and 15. Probably better because Reggie was about to put a hurt on Quay coming through that hole. Uh, I like her. The bear shoes are light, lighting up. I didn't know knows that. Ah, they are, aren't they? <laughs> all right, so first down and 15 after the offside penalty called against the Bears. Now they're all the way back at their 35-yard line. Desmond Young, quick handoff to Jaquay. Oh, nope, nowhere, nowhere to go. Desmond's going to uh, keep Desmond. that one. Great play action fake. Drew Reggie Smith to Jaquay Creighton, but the rest of the defensive line and linebacker shut down Desmond Young. And he's actually going to lose a yard on the play. So it's going to be second down. It should be second down and 16 now as Desmond Young looks, looks to the sideline for a play change. 5.31 left to go as the clock is ticking down. Left in the game. Jaquay Creighton in the backfield. Now Nathan Blair switches to the other side. That is usually a sign that that ball is going to go to him. He's out there with number 23 for the Bears. Chris Henderson, senior for Bass Drop. There's a snap. Desmond Young is fading back. Holding. Three. Logs one up. Oh, holding. nearly in percent. That was holding. No, pass. Nope. no flag no on flag. the play. Oh, oh, no. Oh. No. There was holding on the offensive backfield. Well, not that. He has, the, the defender has just as much right for the ball as the receiver does. That was a bad call by the back judge. A late flag is going to keep this Bass Drop drive alive as he's going to call pass interference against Cedar Creek. That is bull corn. That is not well, a good call whatsoever. Not he's standing a good in call. the backfield. They've got Alfred Collins around the neck. The defender has just yeah. as much right for the ball as the receiver does. This is not. This is this is very very poor. Well, and that's sorry. That's kind of arguable. It was uncatchable yeah. too, honestly. First and ten for the Bears after that debacle at the 49-yard line. Still in their own territory. Here's a handoff. No, Desmond Young's going to keep it. He's going to throw it deep. Turn, he's turn. got Tyson Tarver. And that's going to be a tight. No, he's going to be caught short as Tyson. That's not Tyson. Or Cedric Tarver. That's not Cedric. That's number 12. Oh, it's number 12. That was a 17. All right, number 12. Donovan Strong puts the bass drop. Bears in striking position at the two-yard line. Well, that was on the back, Judge. That should have never been. That was a bad, bad setup 
bad, bad call by the by the back judge. It shouldn't. It was a late flag. It never should have been called. There's Jaquay punches it in for a bass drop touchdown. Extra point pending. Cole Tidwell with the hold. Oh, and it's going to be a He's going for two. Looking to throw. No oh, good. incomplete. That makes it a one-point game. Ooh. No flags on the play. Funny. I would have gone for two there myself. Yeah, you have to. Try to make it at least a field goal tie, not win. So now, now the Eagles are in a position where all they have to do is get a field goal to win the game. It's 29-28. Bass drop Bears here with 4.42 left to go. There's still a ton of time in the game. That back, that was, that was terrible. That was horrible. Pete, guess who's listening? Oh, my game. Shannon Klaus. Really? Shandy Klaus? Yep. Hey, Shandy. Hope you're doing well. All right, well, the Bass Drop Bears are going to tee it up on the 40. Back deep for the Eagles. You got Colton Fitzhugh back there. You got uh, Javon Livingston. And on the far side, looks like we have Dominique Mojica. Four forty-two left to go here in the game. My goodness. Back Eagles gave forth. that one up too quickly, but that was a great shot by Desmond Young to... Number 12, Donovan Strong for the 48-yard uh, connection all the way down to the two-yard line. And Jaquay Creighton punches it in from two yards out for the bass drop score. Point extra, point after attempt is null and void. It was shut down on a two-point conversion, or maybe it was a boss. I'm not sure. And there's a kick, long field, long shot all the way back to Colton Fitzhugh. Picks it up at the five. He's at the 10. He's got nowhere to go. He back. He takes some hits. He's all the way up to the 15. Nearly bobbles the ball, but he's able to bring it back down. That's uh, going to be. I almost wish we had taken a fair catch there. First and down. Yeah, I don't think the kids are used to that rule yet. No, I don't think they are either. They're not used to that rule. A call for a fair catch in fair territory and still get it placed at 25. That's. Well, so, it's. Here. Here's where it is. I mean, we always want to count on our defense to win games. Yeah. This time we got to count on offense. All right, so Hunter Houston, 435 left to go in the game, starting deep in his own zone at the 15-yard line. This drive right here is, I mean, this first three plays is going to determine the game as far as I'm concerned. 29-28, Bastrop on top. Prowse in the backfield, two split to the top. Prowse keeps this one. He's got nowhere to go. He bounces up over the 15 to about the 17 yard line. He's gonna pick up, they're gonna give him the 18. He's gonna pick up three, it's gonna be second down and seven. As he was patient, waiting for the hole to open, it just didn't open far enough, but was still able to get three yards. Clock still rolling at 416. Houston has the play coming in from the sideline. Three receivers split to the top side, one to the bottom. Perral is still in the backfield. Playing off the right hash mark, moving left to right. Turned out to be a really nice night up here in the air conditioning. I don't know what it's like out there. Houston looking to throw. He's got out in the backfield. He's got missed Aaron Perales. Missed that block. Golly. That could be a first down, though. Payne Allen missed the block. That could have opened up Aaron Perales for as yep. far as his little legs would have took him. First down. But it's still going to be an eagle first down. The ball is going to be placed right at the 25-yard line. They still haven't made Yeah, they finally made the indication that's a first down as the Eagles continue to move at the 25 first and 10 353 to go in the game I mean we got a lot of time here but we clock don't will, yeah clock will start on the snap they really have to be methodical about the clock as far as I know what you're saying Scotty because they don't want to score too soon right there's Perales with the handoff. He bounces off. He's got nowhere to go this time. In fact, he's going to lose one or two. Yeah, 74 oh, he got the line of scrimmage. They're going to go ahead and give him forward progress. So it's going to be second down and 10. That was really generous right there. 
Oh, man. Brian George completely missed his block that time. Yeah. That? They're there. All right. Houston has the play. 11 seconds to go. Drops back. One set back in the backfield. Four receivers split. Three top, one bottom. Oh, this is a bad snap all the way back. Houston, throw it away. Houston, throw it away. Throw it away. Oh, incomplete pass. That was a miracle in itself. It's going to bring down third down and 10. Yeah, that was a... That was back. a bad, bad snap. I'm not sure if that was a. I'm not sure what the dealio was there. But we have one Eagle player down on the ground. I'll give us a chance to take a short break. Boy, it's been a while since we had a bad snap. Yeah, it'll happen every now and then. Yeah, it just always happens at the times that we don't need it to. Payne Allen's up under his own power, moving off the field. Maybe limping a little bit. Seems I, like he more like the air got a, knocked out of him. I think he got a, he's holding his kind of, I think he got a knee to the buttocks. Knee to the buttocks? Yeah. They got a knee to the butt. They call that the million dollar wound. Uh-huh. Like Army must keep that bonus. I ain't seen a nickel of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Three minutes and one second left to go. Eagles need to keep it alive right here. It's third and ten. Three receivers to the top, one to the bottom. Bears are showing blitz. Houston rolls out to the left, looking to throw. That ball is going to be nearly in Did he catch oh. it? No. Uh -huh. Incomplete pass. Uh, that was pass. a bad throw. That was a bad decision. Incomplete pass. We have to go for it. Fourth down and ten for the Eagles. No flags on the play. Shocker. No, wow. We're going to punt the ball. No. Oh, Two no. minutes and 53 seconds left. Well, you have to. I mean, you really have to because if they don't make it, that's, you know. Well, yeah, but if they don't, it's a ball game anyway. Yeah, I think so too. Bears got two timeouts left. Eagles only have one timeout left. Yeah, I don't get this decision. Eagles are going to have to punt. There's Houston. Let's it go. Nearly blocked. It's going to come down at about the 47 yard line. It's going to take an eagle bounce all the way down to the, looks like, Bastrop 42 yard line. We'll be first and 10 for the Bears. Up by one, 29 28. As the Bastrop Bear defense or offense comes back to the field after scoring three out of their last four possessions. Well, defense is going to have to dig deep right here. This is this is going to be all heart. We got to force a turnover. Maybe you're almost asking something. too much for him, Pete. Yeah, we got to get a stop yeah. quick too. Two forty-one to go. Here's a snap. Jaquay Jaquay Creighton up the middle, over the forty-five to about the forty-six yard line. It's going to be second down and six for the Bears as the clock continues to tick. Okay. One timeout left for the Eagles. Two for the Bears. They're going to take their sweet time calling the play clock. They're going to take it to two minutes. There's no reason for them to snap it before the two minutes. Wow, if they snap this. He'll, he'll let the play clock go down. So Desmond Young, one setback. Two to the top, one to the bottom, takes that snap. He hands off to Creighton. Creighton's got nowhere to grow. He bumbles and jumbles over the line of scrimmage. Picks up three on the play. Going to be third down and four. As the Eagles call their last and final timeout. Stopping the clock at 1.53 left to go in the game. Bastrop Bears up 29 to 28. Well, we gave up a third and 15 to lose it last year. Let's see if we can hold them at a third and three. From midfield. Yeah, well that that was the that should be the two minute warning. We should still have a timeout left. I don't think they have two minute warnings. They have two minute warning warnings in high school. Oh. Yeah. That's what I was thinking when you said that earlier. I was like, wait a minute, no. Like that. 
Well, he'll show a zero on timeouts now. Yeah, now it so, is. Yep. Well, a minute 53 left to go. This play right here, literally, well, next two plays, because even if they miss it, they're going to go for it on fourth down. Here regardless. So Bastrop defense, like Sam said, needs to come up big right Need here. But defense. it's a big, uh, it's a tall order to try to fill this late in the game. Defense has been on the field a long time tonight. Yeah, hands off the to Jaquay. Wide open big hole. Ball. That's going to be the gonna game. he's going to go over the 40 to the 35. That's the ball. Finally game. runs out of bounds about the 33-yard line. At least he went out of bounds. But that's why we should have went on at fourth. We have, we have not proven we can stop this kid all night. No. We have to go for it at fourth now. There's just, there was no way I'm punting back to Creighton. So minute 46, uh, Bastrop Bears pick up the first down. So the clock will start to roll as soon as this ball snaps and the Eagles have no way of stopping it. Uh, it's victory formation. It's going to let you all know right now it's going to be a short post game, as in none. Because i got to work tomorrow morning. He's just going to take a knee. And that's going to be the ball game. Minute 39 left to go. Eagles had a huge opportunity. And then and then the second half happened. Yeah, they we, tried to fight back. We changed up a lot in the second half. Uh, yeah, I don't I just don't I don't get it. I mean, I don't know if you're going to I don't know if changing it up if you're thinking that the it's going to I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know football. I really don't. I, I'm I'm a common sense kind of guy, you know. Oh, I know football and there's no reason to not to stop doing what we did in the first half. You don't read a book halfway through and then all of a sudden Well, I mean, that's start, the thing. We start didn't speak in a different language. Yeah, why do we Yeah, we we beat them deep. The we entire take, night. Strip the ball. Take one single shot downfield the second half. Nope. Nope. Strip the ball. I mean, what, just, just try to strip the ball away. We beat them deep the entire night. 50 seconds left to go. Clock still ticking. Well, the clock stopped now for some reason. Personal foul. I don't see a flag. Is there a flag? Oh, yeah. On us. My kid's in Crete and still mouthing. Oh, well, they got hit pretty hard out going out of bounds over there. It's good for the goose, good for the gander as far as that's concerned. They've been doing it all night. So I guess if there's an opportunity to return, return the favor, here comes the fullback in. Number 45 for the Bears checks back in. Noe Torres. How many rushing yards Crete got tonight? Oh, I've who lost count after like 300. 48 seconds. Clock will start after they walk off this 15-yard personal foul against the Cedar Creek Eagles all the way down to the 16-yard line where the Best Drop Bears will have a first and 10. One last nail in the coffin, I guess. All right, let's hope for a miracle here. Fumbles the ball right into our hands, and we run it back for a touchdown. Yeah, he's probably just going to take a knee as they go basically in a victory formation. Oh, he's going to go back. I'm not sure what he's doing, actually. Nathan Blair. Mm -hmm. we got three people in the backfield. In case he like does fumble it. <coughs> he's going to take a knee as Reggie Smith comes in and gives one last lick on one of the linemen, and that's going to keep the clock running. And your Bastrop Bears are going to take the Cedar Creek Eagles to the locker room by a score of 29 to 28 as Cedar Creek Eagles continue the, I'm not even going to say that, the Bastrop Bears continue the tradition of keeping the Eagles winless on this crosstown rivalry. And this is Pistol Pete along with Scotty Martin and Sam Houston. We're going to be back in just a few minutes. Listen to KMAX Sports. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. At KMAX Sports, we work hard to provide quality professional broadcasts 
to make it easier for the booster clubs with whom we work to find sponsorships. We ask that you please patronize these advertisers and thank them for supporting your team's broadcasts. You can help your booster club fund the broadcast by simply clicking on the donate button on kmaxsports.com. And if you're a fan of the other school, you can show your appreciation for tonight's broadcast by making a donation as well. Thank you in advance for your support. And now, let's take you back out to the game. From West Texas all the way to the bio and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas. All the this is the KMAC Sports Network, the bringing your teams to you. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. We hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast. And while all of us at the KMAC Sports Network are huge football fans, we broadcast more than just football, you know. In fact, KMAC Sports proudly broadcasts volleyball, girls and boys basketball, softball, baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and more. For more information on how you can help KMAC Sports broadcast any of those sports, just reach out to Chuck at KMACSports.com or Merle at KMACSports.com or contact that sports booster club directly. KMAC Sports will gladly work with you and the booster clubs to get that team's broadcasts on the air. And if you're a fan of the other team, well, we can broadcast your team's games too. We realize that, yes, even in Texas, there's more to life than just football. KMAX Sports, bringing your teams to you for 14 years. Cedar Creek Eagles, best drop pick. On KMAX Sports, the Creek Broadcast Network. All right, we're back. All right, folks, uh, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, we're going to kill the post-game show. Really not a lot to talk about in that second half. Everything happened in the first half for the Eagles. Uh, the Eagles tried to make it close, tried to make it tough. They just could not get the offense or the defense working in the second half, and the Bass Drop Bears ended up coming out. Is that like 29. supposed to be like the Bears keep putting a seven? Is that supposed to be they beat us seven times in a row now? Or yeah. yeah, probably. That's got to be makes them, makes them really proud to be able to do that, I guess. So, anyway, I guess the Bears deserve it. They earned it in the second half. They had uh, three out of four drives that they scored on, putting the Eagles to bed, 29-28. We're going to go ahead and, uh, and kill this broadcast, uh, no pun intended, and we're going to uh, take up the post game. Our next game is right here back at Memorial Stadium Friday night against the Leander Glen Grizzlies, and hopefully between now and then the Eagles will have an opportunity to recuperate and lick their wounds and uh, come back out and uh, take on the Grizzlies next week. So from the Memorial Stadium, I'm Pistol Pete with Scotty Martin and Sam Houston. Final score, Bass Drop Bears 28, your Cedar Creek Eagles 20, or I'm sorry, your Bass Drop Bears 29, your Cedar Creek Eagles 28. And uh, we'll see you Friday night. A little too far, cross the line. <laughs>